G'day there guys, it's your Aussie hubby Marky, back at it again with another episode of r slash am I the a-hole. Now if you love me like I love you, then you know what to do. I want you to tackle that like button like Steve Irwin would tackle a bloody crocodile. Maybe even chuck an Aussie flag down in the comments? Ah, with that said, now I want you to sit back, relax, chuck a prawn on the barbie, and get ready for some bloody good content. Posted by user Coffee Grinder 11 titled, Am I the a-hole for snapping at a barista after she woke up my sleeping baby twice? The coffee shop near my house just reopened, so I went in for a coffee on my afternoon walk with my nine-month-old daughter yesterday. It wasn't busy, but because there were only three baristas, only two serving customers, but three baristas working, the service was slow. That's fine, I wasn't in a rush. But the second I walked in, I was struck by how loud their coffee grinder was. It wasn't just shut off in a few seconds though, but kept going and going. Since the third barista was grinding a huge bag of coffee all at once. Within the first minute, my daughter wakes up and keeps screaming, no matter how much I try to comfort her. After five minutes, I ask the barista if she could stop using the coffee grinder as it's disturbing my baby. Then she agrees and turns off the machine. While I'm waiting for my drink, I manage to get my daughter to start dozing again, until the barista turns on the grinder again, making my daughter cry all over again. At this point, I snap at the barista for turning it on while I'm still there, as she can barely see that she has caused my daughter to cry again. The barista says she was doing something else with the grinder that was more urgent, but could she really have not waited until I left? Anyways, the other baristas were extremely cold to me and didn't even say anything when they gave me my drink. I emailed the manager when I got home, explaining the situation, and today the manager replied and apologized for what happened. In return, I got a free gift card. I was telling my husband this, thinking he would be excited about the gift card, but he doesn't think I should have emailed the manager at all, and that I overreacted. But the manager agrees that I was wronged here. Am I the a-hole? I feel like we're seeing this through the lens of a Karen in a ways, and I don't want to say that to be impolite to mothers with babies, but in this situation, they were kind of just doing their job. She doesn't make it clear whether the coffee grinding was a vital function or not. I don't know if they understand whether it was vital. The way that the manager phrases it makes me seem that they're not the a-hole, because that could have been done later when a baby was removed. So this is kind of a hard judgment for me. But I still think that OP is the a-hole in this situation, and they could have taken their baby away from the area. You're the a-hole. The manager doesn't agree with you. He just gave you the good service speech and a gift card so that you won't harm his business by tramping about it. If your child is sleeping, it is not the rest of the world's responsibility to keep quiet. It's your responsibility to take your child someplace appropriate for sleeping, which is not the middle of a retail business. Agreed 100%. I have two kids. If they fell asleep in public, I did not expect anyone to be quiet or stop their job. Having a kid does not give you special treatment, you're the a-hole. It's extreme entitlement to actually expect them to stop doing their work until she leaves. Also, who is taking a nine-month-old baby out while there's still a pandemic going on? So on top of being entitled, Opie is severely silly, potentially risking her kid's life for coffee. You're the a-hole. The barista was doing her job. It doesn't matter if it was urgent or not, it is her job. If you don't want to be around noise for your baby, don't leave your house and enter a public space where there will be noise. You did overreact massively. This is why God created Postmates or Nespresso. Or just freaking drive throughs I've got small kids. The only time I hit a coffee shop is when they're not with me. Except, you know, for drive throughs I was reading OP's post in sheer disbelief. Cannot fathom expecting a barista to stop grinding coffee in a coffee shop because of a sleeping baby, unless it's a sleeping baby gorilla or something. <laughs> well, that puts it into perspective. She was grinding coffee to actually make coffee with. So the manager wasn't agreeing with OP in this one. I get it now. I'm dumb. OP was just being stupid. You're kidding, right? You went into a coffee shop and got upset when they were grinding coffee? This is what happens in a coffee shop. If the things that happen in a coffee shop are too loud for your daughter, don't take her to a coffee shop. You can't expect the world to be put on hold because you arrived. Your husband was right. 
You were being awful, and the manager was just trying to keep a customer in these hard times, and not risk you doing something worse, like blasting them on social media. Goes to an airport. Um, can you stop making the planes take off? You're disturbing my baby. You joke, but I used to live someplace where the wife of a local politician tried to get an airport that had been there for decades closed down because the sound of an airplane startled her when she was in the shower. True story. Posted by user throwra3468, titled, Am I the a-hole for giving food to my nephew who was being punished? I, 22 female, have been living with my parents for the past few months because of the pandemic. My sister, 25 female, and her son, 7 male, have been living here for about a year. She's a single mum. My sister is a huge perfectionist, and she doesn't accept mistakes. She's very strict with her son, and she constantly tells him she wants him to become a smart, intelligent man. Before the pandemic, he had a tutor, and he was already taking piano lessons, dance classes, etc. He's also learning multiple languages. My nephew is still a child though, and he behaves like a child. He's not a troublemaker at all, but in my sister's eyes he is. Like I said, she's very strict, and she doesn't like messiness or imperfection. A few days ago, nephew was being a normal child, and running around doing child things. He accidentally knocked over a vase. I was the one who saw it first. I asked him if he was alright, and told him to be careful, and sent him to his room. I was cleaning it up when my sister saw it, and then she called Nephew. She told Nephew to apologize. He apologized, and I said it was okay. That should have been enough in my opinion, but she told him that he wouldn't get dinner for the next two days because he broke the vase. Nephew didn't say anything, and I honestly thought she was joking. So, fast forward to night. He wasn't at the dinner table, but I thought she was teaching him a lesson, and she would give him food later but apparently it didn't happen. And at about two o'clock, nephew knocks at my door and he just whispers that he can't sleep because he's hungry. I felt so bad, I honestly struggled to hold back tears because that's so wrong. Maybe I'm too emotional, okay, but I wanted to cry. He's so small. I just went into the kitchen and made him food. I probably made too much noise because my sister came downstairs and asked me what I'm doing. Nephew was already eating and my sis was furious at me. I told her that she shouldn't be so harsh towards her child, which made her very angry for some reason. She pulled me aside and told me that I had disrespected her in front of her child, that now her son won't respect his mother. I went against her, and I taught her son that his mother was wrong, and I was right. That wasn't my intention at all. She said I was an a-hole, she said tramp, but you get the point, for trying to teach her how to parent her own son. I honestly didn't think that far. My parents agree with her, and they also think that I disrespected her. I honestly just feel a little bad for the kid. Was I wrong? Am I the a-hole here? No. That is no way to treat a child. Jesus Christ. Give that kid some food. He's a growing young boy. You need to feed them. They can't grow up. They can't be healthy if you don't feed them. He's seven years old. That punishment is far too harsh for breaking a vase. Obviously, she doesn't care. Why is the mum being so abusive in this situation? I don't know, maybe have a little bit of a talk with CPS. See what's going on over there, buddy. Not the a-hole. Starving a child is abuse, not discipline. Right? Like, who in their right mind would starve a child? And what's with the parents agreeing that it was wrong to feed a hungry kid? I'd literally call CPS. Maybe talk to the sister first. Show her somewhere official where it says that's child abuse so that she understands the gravity of her actions. I'm not condoning child abuse, but she seems like a new mother who doesn't realize that it's abuse. If she doesn't agree to change, then call CPS. Show her where a pediatrician recommends feeding a kid X times a day and she can't create a perfect child if she doesn't feed him. I don't endorse that, I just think that might get through to her. But ideally, she should call CPS. Not the a-hole. Normally, I don't condone messing with another person's parenting, but no dinner for a seven-year-old child for two days for accidentally breaking something? That's child abuse in my view. You were right to give him some food. My rule with everything is don't get involved unless it's hurting people. That's hurting people. It's also child abuse in the eyes of the state. 
If school was open and that kid mentioned to a teacher or aide that he was being punished, that's in quotes because it's abuse in this way, teachers would have to call CPS. Posted by user dsmithxoxo, titled, Am I the a-hole for pulling out of my best friend's wedding? For pulling out of my best friend's wedding, question mark? So I'm a 23-year-old female with a progressive disability, like multiple sclerosis, but slower. Bride is 23-year-old female too. We've been friends for seven years. When she got engaged, she asked another woman who she works with for less than a year to be maid of honor. I was hurt, but I brushed it off. Then when it came to asking me to be a bridesmaid, she commented that I had to wear heels and walk down the aisle and stand for pictures unaided. I was hurt because she knew about my condition and my meds and completely overlooked them. We argued, but made up. Until now. Her wedding is in February 2021, and I told her I was going to be using a wheelchair by then. I've been going back and forth with it for a while. I want my independence back. No pain, no anxiety over walking with my condition. My team at the hospital stated that it would be a good idea. I decided it would be for the best. So I told her. She was instantly off to me. Stating, how would I go into the car to the wedding, carry a bouquet, get into the building? I gave solutions to those things. She then ignored my wheelchair, saying I will walk down the aisle and stand for pictures, right? When I said no, I don't feel comfortable or fully able to do so, I got back a message saying, so you're rolling down the aisle on my wedding day? Patronizing me and making me feel like crap. It's a curveball she has to make work for her and her groom, and she loves me. The bride-to-be clearly wasn't happy, so I asked if it was a problem. She told me that she wasn't happy and she doesn't get it because I can use my legs and can manage fine, and I want to be independent, but yet I'm not using it. All she wants is for me to walk down the aisle and stand for pictures on her wedding day. After that, I could do whatever I want. Like it's that easy. My disability is able to turn off and on. I finally got upset and said, if that's how she feels, I'm not coming. Treating me like a thing to stand in there and smile for her day? Putting everything else aside? My health and well-being? This is the one wedding day she'll ever had, and she tried to fit my disability to work for the both of us. But it always has to be my way. Disability doesn't make a person who they are. Their attitude does. Ripping apart my acceptance of my condition. Because I'm doing what's right for me. I have a bad attitude. I can't believe after seven years of friendship, she's put her one special day over a supposed friend and her health. Like, she's ashamed of anyone to see me in a wheelchair. It will ruin her memories of the day. It will ruin it just by being disabled. Ashamed of me, which obviously made me feel ashamed for wanting a wheelchair. Unlovable, unworthy, ugly, someone that has no business being at a beautiful event because I'm disabled. She removed me off everything, basically saying I'm selfish to do this on her wedding day. Am I the a-hole for dropping out of my best friend of seven years' wedding? I'd say no, absolutely not the a-hole for dropping out. She's being so incredibly selfish and blinded by her own ableism, and that is complete ableism, Jesus Christ. You have until February of next year to make allowances for a wheelchair. It is not that hard. She is just being repulsive. Not the a-hole. I'm sorry you thought this woman was your friend, because she's clearly not. Unless you redefine friend. Totally agree. I don't understand why being in a wheelchair would mean anything for pictures. Someone can help get you where you need to go, and I'm sure people wouldn't even think twice about it. This bride is a total ass. Weddings are supposed to be a celebration of bringing people together, friends, and family. Anything other than that is crappy in my opinion. My brother-in-law's cousin is in a wheelchair, and he asked him to be a groomsman. He was worried that he would ruin things, and my sister and her husband-to-be said it would only ruin things if he wasn't in the wedding. I walked down the aisle with him, and he was in the pics, and lo, not one person complained about the aesthetics. That's what decent people do. This bride can't even fake being decent for the sake of her friend and pretend to be nice. I'm voting to show the bride this thread before Opie leaves her at the altar. 
Posted by user Automatic Piccolo 81 titled, Am I the a-hole for not telling my wife there was a possibility her best friend's daughter is mine? About seven years ago, my wife's best friend and her husband split, and it looked like they were headed for a divorce. Around the same time, my wife, then girlfriend, and I split. I think it's worth pointing out that my wife was the one who called quits. When we split, we were officially broken up. This was not just a break. I did not see any chance for us and figured our relationship was done. So when my wife's best friend showed interest, I decided to sleep with her. We were never serious. It was purely physical. This went on for a few months. And then she broke things off with me because she and her husband had decided to give things another shot. It was not long after they reconciled that she announced they were expecting. She never reached out to me to confirm either way if it could be mine, so I assumed it was her husband's. I didn't know she had been sleeping with him while we were together, but I suspected that there was some other guy that she was also sleeping with based on some of her behaviours. About a year after all this happened, my wife and I started seeing each other again. We dated for a while and then decided to get married. I never told my wife about my relationship with her best friend because we were broken up at the time and I wanted to have a clean start. Everything was fine until her best friend and her husband started having problems a year ago. They have been going through a nasty divorce. At some point, her husband decided that he wanted a paternity test and discovered that his daughter is not his biologically. The best friend then admitted that she was mostly sure it was mine. The husband then contacted my wife and told her what friend had said. Since then, I have been dealing with the fallout. My wife thinks I was an a-hole for not mentioning what happened between us, but I never had any reason to suspect it could be my daughter until now. I don't think it would have made sense to tell her about something that I thought was low probability. It seems crazy to me to hold this against me when I never suspected anything. Am I the a-hole for not telling her when I honestly did not believe the child was mine? Edit, just to note that we did agree when we got back together that we weren't going to discuss who we slept with. I think that is a crucial detail that I left out, and I have never asked either. I was going to say you're the a-hole until that edit. Um, I think it's completely reasonable to then be in the situation that you're in. I'm going to go with not the a-hole. I don't think that he should be blamed for that when they both said that they weren't going to discuss who they slept with prior to getting back together. I think that's unreasonable to be mad at him now. Yes, accidents happen, but Jesus, how is this his fault in this situation? I don't see it, I don't see it as being his fault. Change my mind, please. Now, keep in mind some of these comments are before the edit. You're the a-hole. It's not unreasonable to think that it would be best to disclose to your wife once you got back together. You also said you had no reason to suspect the child was yours, which I find laughable. Ah, uh, you know, I didn't use a condom, but I'm pretty sure there's no possibility she could have gotten pregnant from me. The OP's edit changes everything though, not the a-hole. It's one thing not to talk about who they slept with if that's what they agreed on, but it's pretty stupid of him to be claiming he had no reason to suspect the child could be his. I felt like he should either have made an effort to find out about the paternity of the child, or he should have discussed the possibility with his wife, and they could have figured out how they want to proceed together. Indeed, what he meant to say was, there was a perfectly good justification for me not to deal with it, so I didn't. That said, if they agreed not to speak about it, then they agreed not to speak about it. I assumed the wife had been with other people as well, and didn't want to talk about it. She doesn't then get to be ticked to find out that her husband slept with her friend and that a potential consequence of having sex happened, especially if the friend opted not to contact him and say, this child could be yours. He wasn't obligated to reach out. Honestly, this one can go either way. He's not the a-hole for sleeping with the wife's best friend, but is an a-hole for not wanting to deal with the child before. The situation is exactly what he should have feared, but as you said, he had a justification to not deal with it until now. I think it's slightly tougher situation though. The other woman had gotten back with her husband and wanted to raise this child as his in their family unit. OP getting in the middle of this would have caused a lot of problems when he did not even know if the child was his in the first place. There is no way he could have known that they would break up however many years later and the father would not want what was now his child. 
because he was raising her, so the child was his at this point, in my view. You gotta wonder if he pushed the whole let's not talk about it thing so he could justify not telling her he had sex with her best friend. Also, there's a big difference between let's not tell each other the specifics of who we slept with and I don't want you to... <laughs> I don't want you to tell me if you slept with my best friend. It's a classic lie of omission. It's the same thing as, I don't know, saying borrow my clothes whenever you want and don't ask me and have someone borrow a wedding dress. The conversation was obviously had under normal parameters as a person would reasonably understand them and OP used that to hide extraordinary information I obviously would have wanted to know. See, that makes it worse. We don't know who. Uh, brought the concept up first. So if it's OP that brought up the let's not talk about it, I feel like it goes back into the direction of he's the a-hole in this situation. What do you guys think? Posted by user D titled, Am I the a-hole for posting a video of the mayor of my town driving like an idiot to YouTube? So I have a dash cam, and sometimes I upload videos of dumb crap I see to YouTube. Anyway, I was driving home from work a few days ago, and saw a really expensive Audi cut across three lanes in one move, and cut into the exit lane that I was in, barely squeezing in between me and the start of the barrier. I slammed the brakes, and there wasn't an accident, but it shook me up. It was the closest call I've ever had. The driver pulled off into a gas station, and I pulled over by the side of the road so I could turn my dash cam and get a clear view of the driver's face as he pumped gas, so I could confirm his identity. I had been wanting to make a report for reckless driving because the guy had almost caused a really bad accident. I had never reported something before, but this was probably the scariest close call I'd had and I thought it would be a good idea to. I reported it to the police non-emergency line and they said they'd get back to me but I didn't hear anything yet. I also put the video on YouTube titled Crazy Audi Driver in Hometown Name. I tried looking for it and I couldn't find that. Anyway, a few days later, someone commented on the video saying that it was the mayor. I didn't believe it at first, but then I looked up pictures of him and was certain. It was definitely the same guy. He'd even been photographed by a local reporter near his Audi. I edited the video title and description and said that it was the mayor of the town. And I guess because it's such a small town and the video got shared around, it's one of the earlier results if you look this guy up. It's apparently gotten shared in some Facebook groups, like a local mother's group and a community group, and the guy is getting a lot of crap for it. I didn't see the reposts myself, I'm not on Facebook. But I got a call from one of the mayor's employees asking me to take the video down. I said I'd like to talk to the guy. Like, I just wanted to have a chat with the person who nearly killed me, and then wouldn't even call me himself to apologize? And she got really defensive, but also formal like, I'm afraid that isn't possible at the moment. Anyway, some of my coworkers think it was kind of crappy of me to follow the guy, film him, and put his name on the internet. And I get that. But I also feel like as a public figure and a representative, this guy should be held to a higher standard. Am I the a-hole for leaving the video of the mayor driving like an idiot up on YouTube? No. That's the sort of institutionalized bullcrap that people get away with all the time. Absolutely call him out on it and get him removed from his office if he continues to blackmail you in this way through his assistance. He definitely needs to be held to a higher standard. Absolutely Opie is not the a-hole for this situation. And, you know, keep putting it out there. Keep blasting this man for his stupid behavior. How many mayors of towns can just sweep under the rug their drunk driving, their DUIs, their killing people that they've run into? You see it all the time, and it's disgusting. Not the a-hole. He's a government official and should have more respect for the laws. Also, when you're in that field, you know your life will be in the spotlight. He could have spoken to you, but chose to be a coward, so next time he shouldn't drive like a jerk. Judging by the reaction of his staff, he didn't learn a thing from this. Name, shame, and vote him out of office. Yeah, hopefully this shows people how he really is and he doesn't get elected again. Putting this here so OP sees it. Not the a-hole, and you keep that video up. If the way he drives is any indication, we can see it's clearly obvious that he thinks that a few rules don't apply to him, 
of the road, of physics and velocity, of manners, and probably planning because he almost missed his exits. Let him go through every tedious motion and process required to have it taken down, so that maybe he'll finally understand what it feels like to follow the rules. Then post this in r slash petty revenge. In the meantime, you can post the video of him almost killing you in r slash idiots and cars. Just because he's an important person, doesn't mean he's unable to talk to you. Decide what your bottom line is here, and stick to it. Not the a-hole. If they ask you to take it down again, tell them, oh, I'm afraid that isn't possible at the moment. Yeah, and he's the mayor of a small town. He isn't that important. Should have picked up the phone and called OP to apologize himself. Small town officials can be some of the worst big fish in a little pond jerks, and OP seems to be one of them. OP is not going to get an apology out of him. If the local newspaper industry hadn't been decimated recently, this kind of thing would have hit the front page. As it is, the mayor is going to just have to deal with bad search engine results. Can confirm, our small town's mayor came to a Black Lives Matter protest and said nothing about black lives, but he did go on about how no one was hurting more than our cops, because our cops are good cops. He's honestly a huge tool. Yes, I'm sure the families of the people who have been senselessly murdered are far less hurt than some random small town cops. Do these people take even the briefest moment to think through what they're saying? And I like that. I'm going to end the episode on that today. Does anyone think through what they're saying in these situations? I don't know. I'm not the judge and jury and the executioner and the life giver and the marquee, but I am the marquee. Anyway, enough with my rambling. Am I the a-hole for asking what my friend sees in his wife? So, although I stand strong in my beliefs, my friends told me that what I did was not okay, and I think now I feel conflicted, so I'm making this post. I don't think I'm wrong though, and you'll see why. My friend is very good looking. He met his wife before he met me, around seven odd years ago through school or something, and she's a mess. I mean, she's not the ugliest, but she's really tiny and kind of pudgy, she has an acne problem, which I don't understand since she's 27. She also has a double chin when she speaks, which isn't the worst, I guess, but compared to my friend, who is so good looking, she's basically like a two. The only thing I can give her is that she's kind of funny, and she's kind of book smart, and has an okay job, I guess. But that's it. I've tried my hardest to hint to my friend that he's young. He's only 25. He can find someone else. Even I'm open to dating him, like, he's gorgeous. But he's never caught any hints. It's like he's under a spell. His wife is pregnant at the moment, which is frustrating because I haven't seen him in a while, because of the virus. And we used to call at least semi-regularly, but now he can't because she makes him wait on her hand and foot, and he's lovesick for some reason. Finally, got to video call him the other day after weeks, and he looked tired but happy and gorgeous as ever. She came to say hi, and she's really let herself go. I couldn't even look at her straight without grimacing. She was a mess. When she left the room, all he talked about was her and baby this and baby that, and she this and she that and she's glowing and crap. It's like we see two different people. Finally, I couldn't take it anymore and asked exactly what he sees in her. He was like, what do you mean? So I gave him examples that I put above. Instead of talking to me like an adult, he went really silent, and when I was like, what? What is it? He was like, do you mean that? And I said, yes. And he said, I'm way too tired for this. What? And then he suddenly hung up on me, and before I even had space to breathe, he blocked me everywhere. I really do not understand what I said wrong. I really do want to know what he sees in her. They don't have the same interests. My friends are, since then, hounding me about how I could say that, and everyone I talk to seems to be getting mad at me. I don't think I am, but am I the a-hole? I really don't want to lose him over something to do with her, so should I just apologize? Maybe, I, I think you might be the a-hole on this one, OP, I don't know, you might want to read over that again and see uh, just exactly what you said to someone that's obviously in love with their pregnant wife or partner, and they're doing really well with them, and it's a really tragic time right now for a lot of people. I, I don't know, OP, maybe, Let, let's, you might be the a-hole, let's see what uh, comments have to say.
I'd be open to dating him. He's never caught any hints. You're the a-hole and you need to get over yourself. I couldn't get past, I'd be open to dating him. Someone get this woman a drink of water because she is thirsty. The friend's wife is smart and funny. Opie is a dick and dumb. Who do you think he'd pick? In his eyes, his wife is probably the most beautiful woman in the world, and that's all that matters. Also, acne isn't a huge deal, but a crap personality is. Right? Opie is a woman made ugly by her personality. You're the a-hole. I'm not even convinced this man's wife is as unattractive as she is implying. She's just a hater. I bet the wife is more attractive than OP and smarter and funnier. She's heavily pregnant, and all OP says is that she is a little pudgy. I retained so much water while pregnant, I looked like the Michelin Tires Man or Pillsbury Doughboy. Yeah, the swelling all went away within a month of having the baby, but saying a pregnant woman doesn't look like a runway model doesn't mean she's unattractive when not pregnant. You're the a-hole. You may think his wife is a two in the looks department, but you're a negative 27 in the personality department. If I was this man, I would never forgive you, and I hope your mutual friends follow suit. Can we take a second to realize that this girl met him after he met his wife, and still has the nerve to meddle in their relationship, and wants him to leave her over the most superficial thing? Yeah, I'd also add that I'm 27 and still have acne. That's not weird. What's weird is that you think a man would want to leave his pregnant wife because you don't think she's pretty? Look, I'm turning 36 this year and still have the occasional acne flare-up. Hormones are whack, and not everyone wins the good skin lottery. Posted by user, Am I Wrong AITA, titled, Am I the a-hole for punishing my sons and not the woman? I'm going to keep this short since, frankly, I'm exhausted. Any questions can and will be answered in the comments. Long story short, my family, 35 male, 12 male, 10 male, and I, 32 female, just recently moved into a new apartment complex. Our unit is at the very back of the building, at the back of the property, so behind us is just a wooded area. Nobody lives there. At the very back of our unit, and the one across from ours, is a small balcony that faces out towards this wooded area. Because of the way the building is constructed, you can't see onto another person's balcony unless you go to the stairs and lean over the railing, otherwise the wall blocks you. Across from our unit is a family of four, a young-looking mother, her husband, and their two children who are both under the age of two. I haven't had the chance to go introduce myself because I think one of their babies is a newborn, and honestly, Mama seems exhausted. Anyway, a couple of nights ago, I made a horrific discovery. Went outside to call the boys in for dinner, and found them both with their upper bodies flung over the railing, staring into our neighbor's balcony. I grab both of them by their pants, and ask them just what they think they're doing. And that's when I see it. From their vantage point, they could see straight into the neighbor lady's balcony, where she was sat completely topless with underwear on, listening to headphones. I was livid. Not with her, but with the boys. The way I see it, she's on her own personal property, where no one is supposed to be able to see, and not drawing any attention to herself. Plus, if she's breastfeeding, I get not having a top or bra on. It's tedious to remove every few hours and for every feeding in between. And who wears pants in their own house? Anyway, I digress. I pulled the boys in the house and took away their video games and phones until further notice and told my husband immediately when he got home. But surprisingly, he was mad at me, saying boys would be boys and the lady should have some decency to wear clothes outside, and asked me to speak to her about it. I ripped him a new one and spent the night on the couch, after which he apologized, but the boys still seem upset with me. Am I the a-hole for punishing them, but not saying anything to the neighbor? Absolutely not the a-hole in this situation. You are being led to believe that your actions are wrong in this situation by your partner and his two sons. This is just Parenting 101 that it's wildly inappropriate to go looking into private property like that, especially being a peeping Tom like you are, you little pervs. Come on, man. I don't get why the father is being such a tight ass about it either. He needs a reality check. Just gonna say it now. Not the a-hole. Good for you. Your husband is out of line and frankly acting in a manner that could give your sons the idea that it's okay to just get from women without respect for personal boundaries, whether it's looking or worse. 
A plus parenting from you and thank you for respecting your neighbor. Agreed, it's very disrespectful to the woman and I totally get her just wanting to relax and not feel like she's being watched. Plus, if the boys were flung over the rail, it sounds like it would have been pretty hard to see her normally and they had to strain to get a glimpse. Big, not the a-hole. Yep, the balconies have privacy barriers that they are going out of their way to circumvent. They are acting like pervs and are an extreme violation of her privacy. This is an extremely important point here. If they could just glance out of their window and easily see her, I might say something gently and non-judgmentally to the neighbor like, just so you know, my boy's bedrooms looks into your living room. But as it stands, the neighbor had an expectation of privacy that these boys invaded. When talking to the boys, I would focus on that expectation of privacy as well. It is completely normal for boys to want to see boobs. The important lesson here is not that the desire is wrong, it's that we should all be able to be naked in our own homes without other people looking. Every time my preacher happens to preach on David and Bathsheba, he says he thinks David had to purposefully angle himself on that roof in order to look at Bathsheba. Not that Bathsheba was out in the open and easy to see. The more you know, I guess. Not the a-hole. Boys will be boys. I'm sorry, what century is your husband living in? Like you said, that woman was on her own property. Not only are you not the a-hole for doing some good parenting, you're also not the a-hole because you didn't sexualize this woman. Your husband, on the other hand, could afford to learn a bit. Depending on what state OP is in, assuming she's in the US, her sons may have been breaking the law. In many states, peeping Tom statutes boil down to being met if one person is actively watching or photographing another person who is fully or partially naked without their knowledge. But would that still apply to minors? In a lot of places, many laws are different for minors. They might not actually be able to be charged, but it's still a good argument for punishing them, and it would be a good argument to convince the husband that it's the boy's fault, not the woman's. Not the a-hole. I would have reacted the same way. I would also have a long talk to my son about privacy and gender equality, and engorgement hurts, especially at the tail end of breastfeeding. Ugh, you're preaching to the choir there. Even wearing bras hurt from the friction of them rubbing against my nipples. It's been over 10 years, and the sensation is still a very vivid screw that crap. Maybe tell your neighbor OP. Not because she is being indecent, but because she needs to know. People are looking at her. She probably does not know they can see her. I'm not saying it to be mean to the neighbor, I'm saying it so that she can react accordingly. I know that if people were creeping at me, I would want to know. This situation reminds me of the post of that girl that was named in her home having alone time and kids were looking at her. When she shooed them off, a mum came out and screamed at the girl for being indecent. Even broke a window, I think. The cops were called because the mum was crazy. Thank you for not reacting this way and realizing the boys are in the wrong. Oh, I agree. I'd say hi to the neighbor, tell her I caught my kids peeping, and that they're grounded so that if they ever do it again, to let me know because I'm trying to raise children who respect others. Hell, I'd even ask if she would accept an apology from them because that crap has to be embarrassing enough to remind them that they violated a person. OP, you're awesome. Make your husband sleep on that couch next time he says some sexist crap. A lot of people are saying, no, don't do that, don't go and tell them. I would be of the mind to not go tell them myself. I feel like that's probably a bad idea. Good to just punish the sons and make them not do it again. Posted by user 5267, titled, Would I be the a-hole if I made a donation in the name of an acquaintance who does not support the cause? So I'm 28 male and am getting married this year to another man, 27 male. Most of our guests have been very supportive, but we received a letter from one couple telling us that they do not support us and won't be able to attend our event. They also stated that they hope we find the truth. While I'm disappointed, this also means that we'll save a little money on the wedding, on food, alcohol, etc. I think it's obvious that they're the a-hole for sending this letter, but I wonder, would I be the a-hole for taking the following action? I would like to donate the money I will save to an LGBTQ organization in their name. I'm hoping that I or the organization will be able to send them a receipt and thank you for the donation. Would I be the a-hole? Throw away, as there are giveaways to my identity on my main account. 
I think, unfortunately, if you do that, that's a malicious act, and it's not in good faith. So, OP, as, you know, self-righteous as an act that is, I don't think it's a wise move, and I think you would be the a-hole if you were to do that. I would advise against it, don't go stirring drama. They've not attacked you other than saying we want you to find the truth, which, sure, they can have their beliefs, but you can just block them, you can just remove them from your life. You don't need to personally attack them by doing this, because we don't know the repercussions, how these people will react. It's not always the best idea to do these things. You're the a-hole, but I fully support it, and am also an a-hole. Every year for Christmas, I give my conservative relatives a donation in their name to whatever cause upsets them the most at the time. Planned Parenthood, gun control advocacy, etc. This year, it's looking like they'll be donating to Black Lives Matter. I think you meant to say, not the a-hole. Nope, it's definitely an a-hole move. Doesn't mean it isn't funny, and some people don't deserve it. Fair enough. Eskimo Bob reckons there needs to be a justified a-hole tag. Like, you're the a-hole, but I like it. <laughs> if we ever need a justified a-hole judgment, what you're doing is not harming anyone other than rubbing some much-needed ire in an overly inflated egos of two bigots. Not the a-hole, go for it. I like it. Justifiable a-hole may be my new favorite status. You would be the a-hole. This takes trolling to a whole new level. You'd be wrong to do it, but at the same time, you would be fudging awesome if you did this. If it's okay with you, I shall borrow your idea and use it myself in the future. Sometimes being in the wrong is justifiably right. This is one such time. You're the a-hole. Don't drag the org into this. Because if they call the org and demand the money back, the org isn't going to know this is a spite donation. They will have to verify that they aren't part of some scam, being used for scam purposes, forcing them to review other donations. I run an LGBT org that receives donations like these regularly. We challenge Christian fundamentalism. People run the donation on their own credit cards. They have to, otherwise the donation won't go through, and leave a dedication with contact information for the org to reach the dedicated. The only issue OP or the org would run into is if OP committed fraud with the bigoted person's credit card, but that's a whole other kettle of fish. If you want to be considerate to the org, I would say please don't leave the bigot's phone number. It'd be a real day ruiner for the person who has to do a thank you phone call to them. Congratulations on your wedding, OP, and I'm sorry you have to experience this on what should be a jubilant occasion. We're fighting for you. Posted by user Daisy Cherry Blossoms, titled, Am I the a-hole for not telling my ex I got pregnant? I, 28 female, was with my ex-husband for about six years. During this time, we were trying for a baby but had no success. About four years into our marriage, our marriage had a rough patch. My ex had stress, had work, and slept with his co-worker to relieve it. He confessed to me rather quick, and a week later they sat me down and told me they were expecting a child. I was an idiot back then, and so I felt like I should forgive him because I truly believed he loved me, and I thought I had no one. It wasn't. My ex's family treated me like their own, but my ex's supposed daughter was the apple of their eye. As a result of that, my ex's co-worker was frequent presence in our lives. They felt like they had to include the mum of their grandchild for everything too, and she made her way in every family picture and memory. It didn't help that I suspected that the co-worker had feelings for my ex and flirted with him when she can. People thought that she was my ex's wife constantly, and I finally had enough when during the baby girl's first birthday party, when I was told to take a picture of my ex, his mistress, his daughter, and his parents, and it didn't include me. It hit me that I was now treated as the other woman, and I realized that I deserved more than this bullcrap. I filed for divorce a few months later, and left. It was the hardest time of my life, but I ended up getting a promotion at work, and met this sweet, wonderful guy. Fast forward to now, me and my boyfriend are madly in love, and I gave birth to an adorable baby girl that I considered a miracle baby. I got pregnant with my boyfriend like three months after dating him, and I thought that it was strange that this could happen since my previous failed attempts with X, and had thought that I was the infertile one. It crossed my mind then that maybe he was the infertile one, and he only believed Mistress was pregnant with his child because they were having an affair. 
I didn't say anything though because it was not my place anymore. However, my boyfriend was so happy about my daughter's birth and posted it on Facebook and tagged me in the post. I was still friends with my ex sister in law on Facebook and she saw the post. She called me up and said that she was hurt that I didn't let her know that I could actually get pregnant and the lack of child during my first marriage could be my ex's fault. He took a paternity test. The poor baby girl was never my ex's. The co-worker apparently was dating this terrible guy during the time she slept with my ex and didn't know who the child's father was, so she just strung my ex along because she had feelings for him and thought he'd be the best father for her child. Now my ex blames me for not telling him that I was pregnant way before, and him having to father this girl. He's doing pretty bad now, and I can't help but feel guilty, like I should have told him. Edits, I didn't realize that I could edit my post even after the 3000 character limit. Okay, so first of all, I keep seeing pe that people have seen other posts like mine and some YouTube video? If so, I'm upset that others have had similar situations as me, and that some people find the situation so hilarious that they make a video out of it. I've also never posted on Reddit before, I had a previous account for browsing not posting. I don't think I have to prove my story, and I honestly posted this to not seek validation that my ex supposedly is the worst ever, but to gain perspective, since my ex and his family were my family and close confidants for a large period of my life. We were pretty close, and I had promised to keep in touch after the divorce, which they were super upset about, but I really couldn't after everything that happened between us. They're now super ticked at me for the divorce and for being complicit in my ex taking on the expenses of his not daughter and forming a paternal connection with her for longer than he should have. Edit. So here's what's been happening right now. I haven't spoken to them after this and have been avoiding my ex's calls. He texted me saying that he's sorry and overreacted and felt guilty about prioritizing people who were never really family over me. I only replied with asking how his daughter is because even though she isn't biologically his, she's still his girl. She seems like an adorable kiddo and adores her dad. My ex's mistress is able to support the girl financially, so my ex won't contribute to that, but he says that he's still going to see her every month because he feels morally obligated to. I feel bad for the girl so much because she seems to have lost her family unit. Dad, grandparents, cousins. I'm going to go with a big fat not the a-hole in this situation. I'm going to say that's an incredibly screwed up way for that father to react to his own child. I mean, it is his own child at this point, even if not biologically. Uh, it's not OP's fault at all that she left and didn't tell him when she got pregnant. There is such a thing as having a hard time making a baby in this life. But seeing how he treated his own wife and her forgiving him and then having the mistress such a huge part of his life, and then not in the photo, and just being a heartbreaking influence in general? I don't blame her for leaving. No, that's disgusting behavior. And he shouldn't be putting it on the OP now for what she did. No, that's so wrong. Not the a-hole. First of all, what the hell? Your ex cheats on you and blames you for him taking on fatherhood for a child that is not his. What a... I'm not going to say it because this comment will be removed. Sorry, no rough patch justifies cheating. He should have taken up counselling. He screwed her. He cheated. He should have considered the possibility that she is fudging other guys too. The only one he can blame is the woman who forced that child onto him and himself. Don't feel bad. You don't need to be mad at your ex. But you sure as hell need to grow up and be mad at the audacity that he is trying to make you the bad one here. It's great you still get along with your ex's family, but my dude, he made his bed, cheating with his co-worker who was already in bed with another man. Now he can lie in it and take care of alimony suits and whatever his plan is. I hope he can figure out something because that child considers him her dad already. But hell, that woman stole years from him. Edit thanks for the gold, I'm a sporadic user on Reddit, did not expect to go through the roof like this. Like I would comment on a friend's problem they confided me, thanks again. And I want to make things clear. Yeah, the last sentence was a bit hard to understand. I do still think it was entirely X's fault, and he got all he deserved and more. However, I also see another issue here. The fact of slipping another human being a fast one, in this case, a baby. 
and playing on their good faith, suggesting it is their child. X was at least decent enough to take on responsibility for the child that he thought was his. He played OP and got played in turn. This is a freak fest, and the child is the only one losing here. Not the a-hole. I feel terrible for the baby, but holy crap, what a karmic tramp slap this one is. Not the a-hole. Sucks to be him. He cheated on you and got conned. You are under no obligation to give them information. Yeah, this. Don't forget, he still cheated regardless if there was a kid or not in this mess. If anything, that's probably karma. He probs wouldn't have said anything if the mistress wasn't pregnant. OP also says, A note on the infertility. I always assumed that it was me who was infertile because I had incidents in college where I didn't use protection a couple of times. Very irresponsible and highly not recommended, and nothing came out of it. At the time, I believed I was extremely lucky. But when trying to get pregnant, I thought of the incident as proof that I was the infertile one and had led my ex to believe as such. Him supposedly getting his co-worker pregnant strengthened my belief. We were actually going to a fertility clinic before we got the news about his co-worker, but that never ended up happening. Side note, thank you for all the kind words. I know a couple that had unprotected sex for up to 10 years, no baby. When they split up, both got pregnant and impregnated someone within months. Sometimes, people literally have incompatible chemistry. Posted by user BoyFanon, titled, Am I the a-hole for telling my girlfriend to stop eating baby snacks? Weird title, and this'll sound fake, but it's 100% true. My girlfriend, 26 female, and I, 29 male, have been dating for five years and have been living together for one. She's vegan and health conscious, and I am too. But here's where the problem lies. She really likes proportioned food. Things that are already packaged in small portions to prevent her from over-snacking. That's normal, but she gets these small applesauce pouches and these fruit puree pouches. Small low-calorie snacks that are literally made by Gerber, and they're intended for literal babies. She likes them because to her, they taste good while they're low-calorie. And again, they're already portioned into small servings. But it's literally childish. It's for babies. There's plenty of adult foods that are small portioned and low calorie. Every time we have family or friends over, they always comment on that food being in the fridge, and some even question if we have a kid or not. It's just annoying and unnecessary. So I ask her to stop buying these snacks and get something more grown up, and she simply said no. She even tried to show me on her phone that what she was doing is common and that so many other adults eat these as snacks. But I wasn't buying it, so I broke into a whole fight, where I was calling her immature and saying that she had to grow up. I know, that was rude. And she was saying that I'm being a d-bag for getting mad at her for something that she says is harmless. Am I the a-hole for wanting her to grow up and eat food that's actually not intended for infants? Yes, and you're the biggest child for turning this into an argument over child's food. Like, it's not hurting anyone, it's literally just hurting your ego, you need to grow up buddy. You're the a-hole. Stop trying to control what she eats. It's applesauce. You're the a-hole. If it was because the baby stuff is too expensive and you're on a tight budget, maybe. Personally, as a parent, I don't like the squeezy pouches because kids need to learn to eat from a spoon, drink from a cup, etc., rather than effectively using a straw all the time. You eat and drink too fast through a straw, and it impacts muscle development in the mouth and jaw, so learning speech can be impacted. But for appearance's sake? Who cares? Oh right, OP does. Or if it was because of the plastic waste? Surely adults can spoon themselves a small bowl of applesauce from a large container. That baby food is like 40% plastic packaging. That's a really interesting fact about muscle development in straws though. I didn't know that. You can buy refillable pouches. This is a total win-win. She can portion her food in convenient pouches that she could take with her. They won't be blatantly labelled as baby food, and buying either applesauce or baby food in large quantities is generally cheaper than the pre-portioned packages. Posted by user No Son at Wedding Throw, titled Am I the a-hole for refusing to go to my niece's wedding as my sons, and her cousins are not invited? My niece is getting married late next May, and my husband and myself recently received the save the date. 
On it was details of the couple's weddings website, and upon checking it, the website mentions the wedding is child-free. I have two sons, who are my niece's first cousins, and by the time the wedding comes around, the youngest will have just turned 12, and the oldest will be 13, nearly 14, with a birthday coming July. Now, at 12 and nearly 14, I believe that my niece possibly meant young children, say under 10, and double-checked with my husband's brother, the father of my niece, who agreed with me that yeah, niece probably meant young kids, but he would double-check, especially as my kids are her actual cousins, so it was probably fine. A couple days ago, he rang and confirmed my sons were not invited. My husband and I are quite upset about this. My sons were looking forward to being at their cousin's wedding. I called my niece yesterday to confirm what her dad had said, and she was apologetic, but yes, due to them already being over their intended head count, and the fact they had other similar aged children and younger that were being also cut, she had to just be fair across the board and say no to everyone. I told her how upset her cousins were, how disappointed husband and I are at that decision, and we asked niece to please reconsider, as not only are my sons hardly kids, they are her cousins, and if she couldn't accommodate them, then husband and I couldn't come. The line went silent for a while, and my niece put on this very rude and sarcastic simpering voice saying, I'm so sorry, auntie, to hear that you can't come. I do hope we can celebrate with you at a later date, and basically hung up at me. I was furious about how rude she was at me at what I thought was a reasonable request. Okay, if my sons were like five and seven, sure, that age can be unreasonable but even then, they are still her cousins. My husband agrees that niece is being unreasonable, but disagrees with me calling her and asking her to change her mind, as it's her wedding in the end, and we can't change it. Edit, thank you everyone for your comments, although I think many of you are missing the point. I want to address some things people have mentioned. My sons were indeed looking forward to going. They look up to my niece. My oldest was born when she was around 15, and youngest around when she was 17. She moved away for university to study zoology, has seen them on and off over the years with the last time around four years ago. My niece now lives interstate, but we talk about her constantly. She is already very successful in her career and works as a zookeeper at a very renowned and famous zoo here. As her aunt and family member, I'm very proud of her achievements. We talk about her a lot, as she is a good role model in terms of success and working hard to achieve your dreams, and she is someone I want my sons to emulate as they begin their careers. My sons have also been invited to other of their cousins' weddings when they were younger than this. The first was when they were 5 and 7, and the second when they were roughly 9 and 11. They were both very well behaved at both and had an amazing time. They danced all night and were able to see all other family members as well. They had very fond memories of being at their other cousins' weddings, and were upset at being excluded at this one. And as much as I am proud of my niece, and is fantastic hard worker who has earned every bit of her success, she does have her negative traits, and she is stubborn, sarcastic, and as a child, quite obnoxious at times. She absolutely did put on a sarcastic tone. Every word was heavily emphasized, and she even changed her voice somewhat to sound like a simpering suck-up. It was 100% intended to be rude. And finally, some of you are 100% missing the point. This wasn't so much about not having children there, as it was about not having family there. I know many of you have said cousins are not immediate family, but my niece is someone my sons look up to. My kids are her family. They were the only kids that were family excluded. My niece told me on the phone. The other kids not invited were kids of their friends. Totally different to family. I hope that clears up some of the hastily made you're the a-hole comments that don't fully understand my position. Even with that edit, I'm gonna go with OP is still the a-hole here. It's not your wedding, you can't just guilt someone into allowing you to have your kids there, even if they enjoy the other weddings. Again, it's not your wedding. Either comply with the rules or don't go. It's that simple. Stop beating someone for having rules at their wedding that you don't agree with. You're the a-hole. You're the a-hole. No kids means no kids. There are just some situations that teens and children aren't appropriate at. I suspect there's going to be alcohol and a certain atmosphere they want to have. 
The other issue is that if they make an exception for your kids, everyone will want an exception made. So please don't take it personally and respect her wishes. It's not your wedding. You're the a-hole. It's not her wedding, and she is not even a wedding guest now. The niece was absolutely right in not negotiating with terrorists, which makes me think that it's not the first time that she had tried something like this. So you called your brother-in-law and got confirmation that your sons weren't invited, and then called your niece to confirm? Way to put her on the spot. You're quite an unreasonable person, OP. And asked her to reconsider. In other words, OP tried to guilt niece into including her kids. She knew the kids weren't invited from the minute they got to save the date, and their names weren't on it. You're the a-hole. You're the a-hole. Reeks of entitlement. I understand wanting to double-check to be sure, but you double and triple-checked just to try and guilt her into making an exception for you, then trying to strong-harm her by threatening not going yourself. It's not your day, so no matter how you or your sons feel, no matter how close you are, you have zero say in her guest list. If it is not to your taste, you have every right not to attend, and an RSVP no will suffice. Am I the a-hole for going no contact with my parents after learning they had lied to me about my allergies all my life? Hey everyone, I'm 19 years old and my parents are in their 50s. For as long as I can remember, I have been allergic to several things. Dairy, wheat slash flour, gluten, legumes. Okay, so since I was a young child, my parents have completely kept all of them out of our house. While other kids ate breakfast cereals, I ate fish and assorted pickled vegetables for breakfast. While other kids had Lunchables, I had grilled chicken, or fish, with, again, assorted vegetables. Usually sweet potatoes. While other kids ate birthday cake at the birthday party, I had an apple. I never questioned this until a couple of months ago. I was at my aunt's house for my birthday party, and she made brownies for everyone. For me, she took great steps to make them with almond flour and avoided all of my allergies. I started eating them and thought little of it until my aunt suddenly looked at me and, in a panicked way, asked which plate I took the brownies from. I pointed from the one where I got my brownies, and she immediately stood up and told me we had to get my EpiPen. She raced to ask my mother for it, and I sat there scared out of my mind because I had never mistakenly eaten flour before. I noticed my mother had calmed her down, and then she said that we don't have to worry because she had switched the plate of brownies, and after all, I'd eaten the ones made with almond flour. I found this incredibly odd because really, why would she swap the plates? That doesn't even make any sense. But for the time being, I let the issue rest. It didn't sit well with me for about a week, and I finally went to get an allergy test. The doctor started with a skin prick test. And lo and behold, I didn't react to any of the above substances. Then he ordered a blood test, and when the results came in, they said that I had absolutely no intolerance to any of the foods that I'm supposed to be allergic to. I was furious and called my mother. She eventually admitted that she lied to me because she wanted me to be on a paleolithic diet, and wanted me to be able to avoid all temptations. She raised me with a lie about her own health but she keeps insisting that I try to see it from her perspective. She spams my phone with messages about how healthy I am, that I never had acne, that I'd been in great shape my whole life, that I have strong teeth and bones, and even that I got into a D1 college tennis team. She has started calling me ungrateful for her intervention and insisting that I really should be glad I never got carb addicted. I don't know what to think. I carried around an EpiPen for all those years, one that I suspected may be fake, seeing as my mother never got me to replace it, and I don't even know anymore. Am I the a-hole and an ungrateful son for losing it over this? No, you're not the a-hole at all. She's an a-hole for stringing you along, OP. My god, that's like cult-like abuse of someone's trust and perspective of reality. You're like, you warp into another dimension when a lie like that gets unearthed. Absolutely screw your mum. I can see where she's coming from, but that's no excuse. That's so despicable. Why would you do that to your own kid? That's so disgusting. You're not the a-hole OP. I would uh, consider my options from this point forward. Not the a-hole. You spent your entire life thinking that you could die easily because your mum wanted you on a special diet? 
allergies are incredibly serious, and while you can grow out of them, to be lied to is unnecessary. What your mum did was manipulative and poor parenting. She easily could have had you on a diet like that without lying and making you fear for your life. That's what I was thinking. I was a good, respectful kid. I followed her directions. Why did it take a lie to get me to eat the way that I thought I should? I'll probably keep eating this way for the most part anyway, but knowing a strawberry milkshake won't kill me is a huge relief. Not the a-hole, but if you don't get out there and have a Taco Bell Nachos Bel Grande immediately, then you're the a-hole. <laughs> don't listen to him. Go to an actual Mexican restaurant and get some quality nachos. Agreed. Get a croissant and some Domino's pizza or cheesy bread and baklava and spanakopita and a real burrito. Taco Bell chalupas are awesome and real burgers with real buns and onion rings or mozzarella sticks. So just find a hole in the wall random restaurant and order whatever the heck you want. Source. These are the things I crave after 10 plus years of being non-celiac gluten intolerant. Heavy emphasis on the find a random place that looks yummy and order whatever you want on the menu. And enjoy on my behalf. You earned it. Not the a-hole. Also, tell your aunt about your mum's lie. She should know that your mum made her put in extra effort for who knows how many times and caused her to go into a panic about you potentially having an allergic reaction. When in reality, your mum had lied about your allergies. I feel bad your aunt went through that. What your mum did was so terrible. She needs to face the consequences of her actions. Cut contact until she understands just how bad her actions were. Yes, it was awful, not the a-hole. Opie, by the way, you were very, very smart to check with your doctor after that brownie incident. It's the kind of thing I might not have thought to do, but it's great that you did. Posted by user, Daughter Compensation, titled, Am I the a-hole for expecting my daughter to compensate me properly? It's my husband's birthday tomorrow, and he's asked for a gazebo to replace the old ugly one in our yard. At first, I was really against it because gazebos are hundreds of dollars, and normally I just get him things that are $20 or less for his birthday. So his request took me by surprise for sure. But my daughter said she would pay for half of the gazebo, so I reluctantly agreed to it. She and my husband also agreed to build the gazebo themselves to reduce costs because there wouldn't be an installation fee and such. So I bought the gazebo with my own money and told my daughter to Venmo me half. But I checked my venue and my daughter sent me far less than half. I asked her why and she said she paid $200 to get the old gazebo removed last week. And so that should also count as part of the cost of the gift. I told her that's not how it works, and reminded her that she promised me she would pay half of the gazebo's cost. She got huffy and said since the gazebo itself cost about 500 total, if she paid 250 for it plus 200 for the removal, then she is paying for much more than I am. I told her that the removal doesn't count, and it's tough luck, but she should have thought about the costs before she agreed to do this. Now she's acting like I'm the bad guy and saying I'm going to ruin my husband's birthday. Am I the a-hole? I'm gonna say we don't really know the daughter's age in this one, so uh, even so, you're the a-hole OP for doing that. That was not agreed on in the first place. You decided after the fact that, you know, this cost should be on her because she's going to do it. You know what? I'm just gonna contribute financially. I'm not gonna put my life and body on the line. She can do all that. Uh, no, OP, you suck. You're the a-hole. You're the a-hole. Your daughter paid her fair share. Removing the old gazebo is an obvious part of getting a new one and something you should have considered in the cost as well, not something else to shove on top of your daughter. You clearly don't buy nice things for your husband a lot anyways, and the one time you do, you're choosing to be cheap and ask your daughter to pay for it? Plus, she's going to be enjoying the gift as well. It's not like it's just for her husband. I disagree. Forever, the gazebo will remind her of her own cheap daughter that only paid 50 bucks towards the cost of it. Huh, you're the a-hole. Her cheap daughter who paid and helped her dad build the gazebo. What a monster. You're the a-hole. Your daughter does something nice by offering to pay for half and puts in the work to demolish the old one and you want to rip her off. Also, the daughter doesn't even live in the house that will be getting the gazebo. While it is a gift for the OP's husband and she will be benefiting and enjoying it, whereas the daughter won't be. OP is literally just being cheap. 
She's literally trying to make her daughter pay more than half, but still wants to claim it as her gift to her husband. I doubt that her daughter will be offering to pay for things in the future. You're the a-hole. Over a birthday gift? Damn. Add the cost of the removal and the gazebo together, then divide by half. You really think the gazebo is going to install itself over the old one? Posted by user, do donuts care? Titled, am I the a-hole for calling my wife selfish for wanting to get an abortion? So, me, Canadian male 36, and my wife, Lebanese female 34, have been married for three years. We met when she was in college and got married a few months after. She's a very independent woman and believes in hard work. She's a doctor, I'm an engineer. I work in a completely different field. I know nothing about doctors and their work environments other than the basic stuff, and I've noticed that she's somehow used her job as an excuse to avoid being involved in family activities like dinner, heart-to-heart -heart conversations, etc. She'd say, I'm busy, I'm exhausted, I just got back from work, I'm not ready to talk about this or that. I tried my best to be patient and understand she must be stressed out from work, but it got to a point where it has gotten ridiculously annoying for her to just focus on her job and ignore her family. Last week, she told me she was pregnant, and that I was going to be a dad for the first time ever in my life. I was excited and happy. I honestly thought that we would never have kids, because we'd been trying for a long time, but she proceeded to tell me that it was not a good time, and that she wanted to get an abortion. I was stunned. This is our first baby together after waiting for the two whole years, and do you want an abortion? Why? She started telling me that she wasn't ready or sure about the baby, given our current situation. She brought up our recent arguments and used them as an excuse, because I know it wasn't because of that. She was afraid and nervous, but didn't want to show. I told her having the baby is going to make our lives sweet and will strengthen our relationship. Um, very bold statement, that one. She still wasn't sure. She told me, please try to understand my situation. I stopped her right there. Told her she was being unreasonable and selfish to think she can get an abortion after waiting so long for it to happen. She replied to me saying, if this is about your mum, I don't have to please her. I'm not a baby machine. I'm human. She probably said this because my mum used to ask her, where is my grandchild? All the time, but that's another story. I feel like we'd probably get some good context if we knew that story. It escalated when she brought mum up and said she wanted time. Then the next day, got up and went to work early without even talking, acting like nothing happened. I don't get it. I've always wanted to be a dad, but she straight up said she's willing to abort my child that I've waited an eternity for. And the abortion question is one that I really don't want to give too much of an opinion on ever. I think we don't know enough about this situation. We've got this one specific time in their life, and I don't know what these people are like or their morals are, so I'm not going to put an opinion on this one. It is not my place to. You're the a-hole. She's not an incubator. If she doesn't want to have a baby with you, she doesn't have to, and you can't force her to. Having an unwanted baby does not strengthen or sweeten a relationship, it builds resentment and delays the inevitable. Yes, the whole have a baby to strengthen our relationship is a myth. It's all about communicating with your partner. I can't believe he tried to make her look like an a-hole for wanting to improve the relationship before popping out a child. Possibly he hopes having a baby will make her step back from work, thereby strengthening their relationship because she's forced to be family oriented. I think this is spot on, given the way he talks about his wife. But particularly, it sounds like he's hoping it'll cause her to pay more attention to him. Especially telling that he said it's ridiculously annoying for her to just focus on her job and ignore her family, when he's clearly not talking about extended family and they don't have any children. What family? Him. He feels like she's too focused or distracted by her job to give him the attention or emotional support that he wants which, on some level, is a valid issue in a relationship. But from the rest of this post, it sounds less like that's a genuine problem, and more like he has a problem with her having a career like this, and feels like it's taking away from what he thinks she should be giving him, which is children, and possibly a more traditional family. Hence this coming to a head over this pregnancy. I told her having a baby is going to make our lives sweet and will strengthen our relationship. 
That is not how it works. A baby will make your life harder, more stressful. They're expensive. They keep you up at night screaming. They make messes and break things. They get sick and have issues. They definitely don't make marriage any easier. They add pressure and strain to your relationship, often create resentment. If you have this mindset towards having a baby, you aren't ready. Neither is she. So your marriage isn't ready for a baby, you're the a-hole. True, they're not ready, but she's clever enough to say it. It takes some courage to do so. OP, you're the a-hole. It really sounds like he and his mum pressured her into agreeing to try for a baby. And then when she got pregnant, that was the moment of truth when she realised that she really didn't want one. That was what other people wanted. Honestly, I feel bad for her, because her opinion isn't really being taken into consideration. Posted by user, Goodbye My Boy. Titled, Am I the a-hole for giving guardianship of my son to my aunt over my mother after I die of my terminal cancer? I, 21 male, have a son who just turned one. His mum, who was my girlfriend, died in labour along with the other baby she was carrying. I was diagnosed with terminal cancer three months ago, and I don't have very long left. Two months at most. I have accepted that I'm going to die, but now I have to think about what's best for my son. I have decided who my boy would go to, and I thought that my mother, 55, naturally. But then I start to think of her situation, as my older, 29, lives with her, along with his five kids, all aged under five. And I decided not to, as my mum works, and my brother, to be honest, isn't really raising his kids, more dragging them up, and can be neglectful. I wasn't going to put my son in that environment, as I want someone to actually care for him. So I then thought of my aunt, 33, on my dad's side. She's a good mother, and her husband a good father to their three girls, and I know they could provide for my son. I asked them, and they agreed. My mother, however, found out that I wasn't leaving my son with her, and she got angry at me, that she's losing me and now losing her grandson. I gave her my reasons, and that she realistically can't raise him while she's basically raising a man-child and his kids. It all ended in an even bigger argument, and now I'm calling off at home. I understand that things are terrible for her right now, as I won't be here soon, but my aunt is a much better choice. It's not like my son won't know who she is, as the walk between hers and my aunt's is only five minutes. Am I the a-hole? I'd say no, Opie's not the a-hole. It's their dying wish they should get to choose where their child goes, and that's not the environment for a child to be raised in with a man that's not raising his own five kids. The mother sounds like she's living in an idealist world, and this is a response to the trauma of losing so many people so close to her. And while I can empathise with the mother, we do have to do what's best for the kid, even if that is not being with that particular family, even though they're only five minutes down the road. I want to first offer my condolences over this entire situation. You are a bright and kind young person, and I'm so sorry this is happening. Short answer, no. Not the a-hole. You have to think of your child, as hard and as horrible as this all is. I'm unfamiliar with how child custody works once both parents have passed away, but what might offer a decent solution is, if you're able to specify that legally, your mother might be able to spend time with him. This is a very delicate situation, and despite it all, I must say I believe you are handling it very well. I'm sending so much love and light your way. Not the a-hole. You're taking a final responsibility to ensure that your child has the best chance for success. Don't feel bad about it, and don't let your mother talk you out of it. You're a good dad, and I'm sure your child will grow up knowing and appreciating that. Piggybacking to say that you should draw up a will to transfer full guardianship to your aunt. There are states where the court can decide that the child should go to the grandparents, even if that's not what you want. If you think it's something your mother will make a fuss over, or try to make it trouble for your aunt, you definitely need to talk to a lawyer. On top of that, take the time to write some letters for his major milestones. First date, turning 10, turning 16, 18 and 21, getting married, graduating high school and college, etc. It'll mean the world to him as he grows up. Oh, and maybe include bits about what his mother was like as well, and maybe leave something sentimental to him to have when he turns 18 from both you and your girlfriend. If you have anything, honestly, even print out some pictures would be good too. 
like a watch, a baseball cap, childhood stuffed animal, or just anything that holds meaning to you. That would honestly be so special and would definitely at least let him know that he was so loved by you. Piggybacking to say, leave more than one thing. Nothing more heartbreaking than to have one item, let's say a watch, that's incredibly important, then have it lost, stolen, or a friend pushes you into the pool with it on and it's gone forever. Also, the comment below making him emails, set up two accounts, in case of an adolescent anger fit or someone else deleting them or lost password or tech issue or whatever. One copy for him, one backup copy that someone else has the password to and can resend them if needed. The things and notes you leave will be meaningful. Your child will have good moments and bad, and he'll miss you and be angry you were taken. Try to minimize the damage he can do to himself while he's learning how to manage his deep feelings. Posted by user Yusuf Deharam, titled, Am I the a-hole for telling my girlfriend her chronic illnesses are her own fault? So my girlfriend, 20 female, and I, 36 male, have been living together for about six months now. She has quite a lot of mental and physical health conditions. She has chronic migraines, hypermobile joints that are causing severe pain, her wrists, chronic kidney disease, and pernicious anemia, as well as depression. She's been struggling a lot over the past few weeks, a lot of headaches and pain in her wrists, but to me, she's doing absolutely nothing to help herself. She eats absolute junk, and when she's feeling okay, she does absolutely no exercise or anything that could help her depression or her headaches. She's so depressed, she hasn't even showered for maybe two weeks? The other night, I tried initiating a conversation on getting her back to feeling okay, and she got really ticked at me, telling her I just don't understand how she feels. I appreciate that I don't, but I replied telling her she absolutely has done nothing to help herself, so it's her own fault. She feels like crap all the time. We ended in a massive argument, and she's been cooped up in the spare room ever since. Am I the a-hole? Unfortunately, OP, you are the a-hole. You obviously cannot put yourself in her shoes, and I know you want to do the best for her, and you want her to make herself better, but you're not a doctor at the same time. You don't know how to help her entirely. You don't know what you're doing. You're kind of just giving your opinion, forcing it on her, and not apologizing when she reacts badly to you, and she reacts in a justified way. Not changing your tune and being accommodating to her makes you the a-hole. You're the a-hole. One, why are you with someone that's just over half your age? Two, side effects of chronic illnesses are depression. Instead of crapping on her for being depressed, you should try to support her and help her feel better. It's even more than that if you look at time being an adult. She's been an adult for two years, and he's been one for 18 years. Age gaps aren't inherently asshole though. Opie, you're the a-hole because you're shaming her for being depressed. It's hard to care for yourself when you're depressed. Offer help instead of shame. Okay, so I have chronic migraines like Opie's girlfriend. My dad always feels like he can tell me, well, if you just ate better, you might not get them. Or, well, if you just fixed your sleep schedule, they might go away. And then he gets mad at me when I tell him I know what my actual triggers are, and the problem isn't as solvable as he thinks it is. He continues to scream at me and act like it's my fault I have a chronic disease, and that also causes depression. I hate people who act like they know more about your chronic disease than you do, OP. You're an a-hole. And there are healthy foods that trigger migraines. My husbands are triggered by avocados, which sucks for him because he loves guacamole. You're the a-hole big time. One, why are you 36 dating a 20 year old? That already sets off so many separate flags. Two, depression is almost always a side effect of chronic illnesses. Three, you think that at 20 years old she hasn't tried everything that would help with her chronic illnesses? You think you know her illness is better than the person who's lived with them for, I'm guessing, at least a good chunk of her life? It's a good question. Posted by user BritAnn2, titled, Am I the a-hole for telling my sister that her husband was bullcrapping her? This is a wild situation. To give some backgrounds, I, 32 female, have a sister, Leia, 26 female. She's been married to Jake for five years, and they have two kids. We all grew up very Christian, I ended up leaving the church, but my sister and brother-in-law are still on fire Christians. Anyway, Leia has mentioned things to me that seem very sketchy. 
I think Jake is cheating, but she won't accept the thought. He leaves their bed at night and doesn't come back till after work the next day. He hides money, and he's trying not to conceive another kid with my sister. I've gently tried to give her reality check, but it hasn't worked. Well, on Friday after work, they came over to swim. Totally fine in our state. Jake was swimming with the kids, and my sister and I were sitting in the grass, keeping an extra eye on them. Jake had lots of red scratches on his back. To me, they looked like fingernails. I made a joke to my sister about their dry spell being over, and she said they still hadn't had sex in a year. I gently told her that they looked like finger marks, and that it was pretty sketchy as hell. She said casually that Jake had gone on a prayer walk with his men's group, and had been spiritually attacked by a demon. Now, we grew up with these kinds of beliefs, but I told her that was crazy and just an excuse. She got really flustered and pulled her kids out of the pool. She told Jake she had a headache, and they left. Am I the a-hole for telling my sister my concerns? Should I have stayed out of her business? Edit. I got overwhelmed trying to respond to comments, but thanks a ton to everyone who commented. To the people asking whether my in-laws are really named Jake and Leah? No. It comes from a Bible story, and I thought I'd be clever with the aliases. To the people asking why I haven't intervened before in my sister's relationship? I've tried to gently bring it up, but I was worried about hurting her or being wrong. My partner and I are currently stuck in my home state due to COVID, but I actually have a job in another country that I'll be returning to once the pandemic ends. I haven't been around my sister too much in the past year, but I did try to call her a few times a week before I moved back. Finally, to the people calling my sister stupid, she's not. Please have a little empathy. The idea that your husband might be cheating can be hard to face. I'm gonna say OP is not the a-hole for this one. The sister is in heavy denial. She seems like she's using her religion as a face for it, to kind of come to terms with it, to make excuses for the husband, and I think she doesn't want to accept the reality yet. She's going through the phase, and I hope she does make it to acceptance at the end, and I hope that she leaves that man, because to be going on for such a long time can destroy someone's soul, really, in this context. You just become destroyed, as we've seen through a whole bunch of stories. So OP, not the a-hole, and I hope that your sister gets help. Jimmy Jr. Dance Party says, I mean, not the a-hole for trying to help, but if your sister is so deeply deluded she thinks her husband's sex marks are from a demon, there's no helping her see the light. I would just drop it. Excuse me, are you telling me you don't believe in succubi? Well, I never. How dare you? I will pray for you. Could be an incubus. Who knows? My first thoughts. Strictly religious? No sex for a year? Spends a lot of time with a men's group? Sounds like he's a closet case to me. I feel bad for Opie's sister if so, and her husband a little. Not the a-hole. Then in his mind, he might be fighting the demon of homosexuality, which was actually just the finger marks of another dude. We wrestled naked for hours. He won again and again and again, but I refused to submit. We agreed to battle next Tuesday. <laughs> Not the a-hole. The husband is. But at this point, you've done all you can. Your sister is in denial. Pushing further will just push her away. Perhaps even after she comes to terms with it. As someone who's been in severe denial about someone I cared about, this. I know it's upsetting, OP, but don't push too hard. It will only push her away. Hopefully, she'll figure it out on her own, eventually, and feel ridiculously foolish. But that's her mistake to make. I had my boyfriend and therapist both gently telling me I was in an abusive relationship for months. I only accepted it when crap hit the fan and he became delusional, blaming me for things he had done, harassing and threatening me. I suppose the only issue is that if your sister believes the scratches were from a demon, she might be delusional herself. I'm so sorry, OP. This is rough. Well, she said she's still a hardcore Christian, so check mark on delusional still. Oh, <laughs> come on. Stop, man. Not the a-hole, but use caution. You need to be her safe space. Pushing will cause her to shut down, and if she tells her husband that you're doubting his completely freaking absurd story, he could push for her not to talk to you. Excellent advice and I can just imagine the stories husband will make up to cut OP out of her life. And if sister believes demons dug their Lee press-ons into his back, she'll believe anything he says. 
Am I the a-hole for not wanting to talk about my children that I lost in the 2004 Boxing Day tsunami? In 2004, my family and I decided that over the Christmas period, we'd go vacation to Thailand. My husband had spent some time there as a child and really wanted to go back. I had two small children, a four-year-old girl and a two-year-old boy. We arrived on the 23rd of December and were due to go back on the 2nd of January. On the 26th, Boxing Day, a tsunami hit the resort we were staying in. I was upstairs in our hotel room when it hit, whilst my husband was with our children in the dining area. I prayed that my husband had our children whilst I fought for myself. My husband and I were reunited three days later, and he told me that the tsunami hit before he managed to grab our children. We stayed in Thailand for four months, hoping our children were being kept somewhere with us presumed dead. But after searching pretty much everywhere, we presumed the worst and returned home, which was the hardest thing we've ever done. I didn't deal with the loss well, nor did my husband, and we ended up divorcing three years later. We couldn't even look at pictures of the kids and broke down just looking at each other. My family has always been as respectful as they can, apart from my mother. My mother and I never had a good relationship. She was heavily addicted to drugs when I was born and was in and out of my life until I was 15, when she sobered up. I was full of resentment and left the family home at 16 and we went about 10 years without talking. Over the quarantine period, I've been staying with my sister and her family and they also let my mum live with them. My mum will make dinners extremely uncomfortable for me by telling my nieces about the cousins they never got to meet and how she felt when she found out, even though we weren't talking at that time. Last night, I finally snapped. We were sitting having dinner when my mum asked about how my now ex-husband is. I told her I don't know, as I don't. We haven't spoken that often since we divorced. She asked if we'd still be together if the kids were alive. I asked, how the frick was I meant to know? She told me to stop being a tramp, and I told her to stop bringing up the dead children. My nieces started getting upset because we were shouting. My sister told me to calm down, as they're all allowed to grieve too, which I completely disagree with. I left my sister's house and to a hotel not too far away because I seriously can't take it anymore. But my sister has called multiple times telling me I've become a serious a-hole since losing my children. Am I the a-hole? I think it's a typical case of people not going through these experiences, not experiencing what this trauma will do to you, and not recognizing what the responses are. So absolutely, OP, you are not the a-hole. These people don't understand and refuse to come to grips with what you've gone through, and I just have no words for them. Not the a-hole. Your mom was purposely digging into you for a reaction. I'm sorry for your loss, and I hope the distance from your family who don't respect your boundaries give you some better peace. You could never be the a-hole in this situation. OP, your post made me cry. I'm so, so sorry this happened to you. I can't even imagine how you must feel. Not the a-hole. It's like your mom is looking to rub salt in the wound. Not the a-hole. Yes, the loss of your children extends to your family, and even their friends, and your own friends who have met them. But no one will feel it greater than you and your husband. It sounds like you and your mother slash sister grieve in opposing ways. You do not want to talk about your children, but your mother and sister want to include them in their lives and talk and think about them regularly. Your mother crossed a line by bringing up your children despite knowing your feelings, then again by asking if you and your husband would still be together if they were alive, a question that only serves to be extremely nosy, cold-hearted, and condescending. Your sister also crossed a line by calling you an a-hole since losing your children. It sounds like they simply cannot understand your feelings and think that you should be processing your grief more like they are and are frustrated that you aren't. I think getting space away from them and going to the hotel was a great idea, but it might be time to think about next steps. Living with your sister and mother might not be good for your mental health, and it's maybe time to start thinking about a different place, to wait out the rest of the quarantine where you won't be bombarded with crap like this and your feelings will be respected. The sister is 100% right that everyone gets to grieve, and the natural progression to that is that everyone gets to grieve in their own way, in their own time which is exactly what Opie was not allowed to do, not the a-hole. Posted by user, Boyfriend Daughter Trouble. Titled, Am I the a-hole for asking my boyfriend to stop wearing suits outside of work? I know this sounds weird, but here goes. 
I've been dating my 47 female boyfriend, 52 male, for two years. We met in a grief counseling group after losing our spouses. Everything in this relationship has been great. Our kids get along great. I even got a Mother's Day card from his son, thanking me for making his dad smile again. It was sweet. My daughter, 19 female, adores my boyfriend. I was surprised how fast they hit it off because she's very shy, but I didn't want to question it, so I let it go. But as time went on, things got weird. On Valentine's Day, he got me a bouquet and a rose for her, and she still has it hanging in her room. She gets up early every morning to make him a latte, and every night when he gets home, she's waiting in the kitchen with a beer and a sandwich for him. He has back problems, so she bought him a computer chair with a massage rollers on it, which ticked me off because I am a masseuse. I can take care of this man's back just fine. I refuse to be replaced by an effing chair. I asked my daughter why she keeps doing this stuff, and she said she just likes him. I asked why to see if I could get more info, and she started listing things. He's smart, funny, nice, blah blah blah. But what stuck out was when she said she loves the way he dresses. My boyfriend is a funeral director, so he always wears black suits. When I first started dating him, my daughter would always call him sharp-dressed man, saying things like, are you gonna go see that sharp-dressed man again? Or, when did you get to meet your new sharp-dressed man, mum? My daughter always says she wants to marry a man in a suit, so I assumed this was her way of showing approval. But now, I'm starting to wonder if there's more. I've been wanting to suggest that he stopped wearing suits outside work, but he loves his suits. We just bought a house together, and I know he's been looking at rings. This man is a chess champion who speaks six languages, yet doesn't know how to close his laptop when going to the bathroom, lol. So I'm invested in this relationship. I love this man, and I want to marry him, but I'm afraid if I tell him what's on my mind, he'll kick my daughter out. This all came to a head last night when we were watching a movie, and she went up to get drinks. When she came back, she handed my boyfriend his beer, and then tried to sit in his lap. I say tried, because my boyfriend pushed her off and angrily told her what she did was inappropriate. He stormed up to our bedroom, and I followed him up to talk to him. He started saying that my daughter should start looking elsewhere to stay, but I told him about the suit thing, and that maybe if he just wore normal clothes outside work, she wouldn't act so weird. He told me I was being ridiculous, and we went to bed. I made him breakfast this morning, but he left to go eat instead. He says he's in the McDonald's parking lot now, but we're going to have a serious talk when he gets home. I don't know what to think. Am I the a-hole? Update on our conversation. Well... It turns out some of you were right, and there was a lot of crap I didn't know about. An entire crap show's worth, in fact. My boyfriend showed me several disturbing text messages, no actual propositioning or anything, just weird stuff like, I miss you, and are you awake, at 2am, etc. And apparently, my daughter had confided in him about a close relationship she had with her basketball coach right after her dad died. My boyfriend said he kept it a secret because she begged him not to tell me, and he didn't want to break her trust. I, of course, was incredibly hurt to hear this, but at the same time I understand why he didn't tell me. Apparently, he is the only person she has ever talked to about this. It turns out that my daughter has basically been treating my boyfriend like a private therapist for the past several months, and he didn't tell me because he wanted to help her. He chalked up all the favours to her just showing gratitude for lending an ear, and didn't realise how she might have felt differently before last night. He apologised for insisting on kicking her out, and I apologised for the stupid comment about his suits. It was a comment I made out of being in denial, and now I realise that she needs therapy. When I first started grief counselling, I did ask my kids if they wanted counselling. They both said no, and I didn't want to force it on them. When I sat my daughter down to talk about the boundary issue, she burst into tears and started apologizing. I had an extremely uncomfortable but necessary conversation with her, and I told her that I'm going to start looking for a therapist. I didn't tell her that I know about the basketball coach because I don't want her to feel betrayed, and I'm hoping a professional will be able to get it out of her in a more sensitive and controlled manner. But so help me God if that motherfucker ever shows his face in my hometown again, and she asks me why I'm in jail. I guess I'll have to tell her that I know about it then. But for now, her healing from the past is my main priority, because it really does seem like her dad screwed her up 
far worse than I thought. My boyfriend and I have made up, and no one is getting kicked out, but things are still pretty awkward. She's basically quarantined herself in the basement. For now, we all just need some space, and my boyfriend has already helped me find some good therapists in our area. Posted by user Roman Melville, titled, Am I the a-hole for mansplaining my date's disability? At the beginning of lockdown, I was bored and on Tinder, not unusual, and met this woman called Lara. We began talking and agreed that we should meet up once restrictions had lifted. She, very early into talking, warned me that she was severely deaf, but I have met deaf people before this, so this didn't bother me. She came over to my apartment, and we, at the beginning, really got on well. She didn't look exactly like her pictures, but I thought it wouldn't hurt getting to know her a little bit. A few minutes after we got situated and comfortable with each other, I asked her some questions about herself, which she didn't answer as she said they were too personal. She then made a comment about her deafness, so I took that as an opportunity to tell her that I knew and ask her if she'd ever consider a cochlear implant and such. She rudely interrupted me and told me I was getting some of my facts wrong, and when I asked her how she became deaf, she said it was meningitis, which I was unaware of could cause deafness. So in the moment, I laughed and said that wasn't true. She left half an hour after getting to my place and said I wasn't listening to her, nor was I getting my facts right. I got quite irritated by this, as I thought it was quite rude, so I told her I'd walk her back to hers, to which she refused, saying it was fine. I checked my phone later that evening, and she'd sent me a long text before blocking me on everything, basically saying I'm a massive ass. When I've told my friends about the date, they've all said that too. Am I the a-hole? OP, I think it's pretty obvious you're the a-hole here. Just because someone's deaf, you don't get to explain what caused them to be deaf. I'm pretty sure they know why. It's a big slap in the face to be told that. Think you realize that you're an a-hole and you're just looking for closure. You're the a-hole. You asked a deaf person how she became deaf and then laughed at her and called her a liar because of your own lack of knowledge about the situation. The correct response would have been, oh, I didn't know meningitis could cause deafness, not, ha ha, no, you're wrong about the cause of your own disability. I'm also amazed someone who claims to have any knowledge on deafness doesn't know meningitis can cause it, like, that's fairly well known, at least where I'm from it is. Honestly, if I didn't watch Switched at Birth, I wouldn't know meningitis caused deafness, but I also wouldn't have reacted as horribly as he did. The correct response to this is exactly as the commenter stated above, not accuse her of lying. She rudely interrupted me. Imagine having the audacity to interrupt someone as they try to explain your disability to you. That's sarcasm. You're a troll or this really happened. Either way, you're the a-hole. Yep, apparently the polite thing for her to do would have been to sit there wide-eyed listening. And then when he's finished talking say, wow, I believed the doctors when they said it was meningitis, but it turns out I was wrong. And I never seriously considered a cochlear implant until you explained their benefits just now. I'm gonna go get one. You're so much smarter than me, and that makes you me attracted to you. Let's screw. Posted by user throwaway86, titled, Am I the a-hole for refusing to stop having a relationship with my bio daughter because my girlfriend is uncomfortable? I've known my best friend Brenda since we were kids. I was the first person she came out to as lesbian when we were in our senior year of high school and fully supported her. She met her current wife in college and they got married six years later. When I was 27, they both talked to me about wanting to start a family. They asked if I would consider being their sperm donor because they wanted someone they trusted rather than a stranger and who would be there when their child started to have questions about their donor. I was honored that they thought of me and agreed to do it. It felt good to help people I care about start their own family. We went through the whole process, and a year later, Brenda gave birth to their daughter, Lucy, after Lucy Lawless, of course. Since she was born, I've always wanted to be present in her life, and we have a great uncle and niece type relationship. The three of us have been happy with how things are, and they're glad I'm close with Lucy. She's already been told of how she came into the world, without the full details, and while she knows I helped build their family, I'm Uncle Steven to her. Three years after she was born, I began dating my girlfriend. I didn't tell her about Lucy till four months in, and it took her time to process this, 
but she eventually came around. We've been together three years now and planning on getting married. Last week was Lucy's sixth birthday and we were both at their house. After cake was cut, we all started taking pics. I told my girlfriend to come so we both could get one with Lucy, but she said no. Didn't think nothing of it until I noticed she was distant and hardly interacting with anyone. We talked after we got home and she said she didn't feel comfortable with me seeing Lucy anymore because it still felt weird that I donated sperm and now I'm playing a role in her life when donors don't do that. This was a shock to me because she never brought it up before. When I said I wasn't gonna stop, she got frustrated and it became a huge fight. She didn't understand why I had to be in Lucy's life and it felt unfair that she has to share me with someone who's not my legal responsibility. At one point, she asked if Brenda and I slept together and came up with this donor idea to cover the fact that I knocked her up and that's why I'm involved. I get we were both angry, but asking that was out of line. I told her I'll never cut off my relationship with them and left our apartment. She's still been trying to convince me for days and to also consider her feelings in all of this. To her, it's unreasonable to choose a kid that'll never truly be mine over her, someone I can have a future and start a family with. I feel bad that she feels this way, but it seems like she's not being fair either. It's been rough and I don't know who's right or wrong. She's making me feel like the bad guy here and I need a neutral party's help. Am I the a-hole? I think, no, your girlfriend is being somewhat bigoted towards these people. I feel like she's not outwardly being that way, but Jesus, what excuses do you have to cut this one out of your life? You made that choice to have that kid in your life. You chose that before you started the relationship with her. She committed to the relationship. She had to accept the fact that the kid was part of your life. She can't become jealous now and destroy that. I don't think it's worth keeping that woman in your life if she's going to be that way. OP, not the a-hole. Wow, your girlfriend is angry you have a relationship with your biological child? Four red flags. You are not the a-hole, and you do not want to have any kind of permanent relationship with someone who would sever your ties to your biological child. Run, and run now. Came here to say run. Not the a-hole, but I also don't see how you two are compatible from this standpoint. This seems like an impasse, and something your girlfriend thought she was okay with and changed her mind, or didn't know of the full scope of what she was getting into when she said it was fine with her. But you do what is right for you. Anyone trying to change that, especially when, if I remember right, you've been in her life before your girlfriend was in yours, well, that's asking a lot. It's asking a lot of you to expect you to ghost this little girl, and it's selfish too. If your girlfriend wanted to be in your life, she would be happy to share you with a six-year-old girl who has a life of her own, not asking you to ghost her. I agree, maybe the girlfriend was okay with the idea, but when actually faced with the reality, she realized she couldn't handle it, and that's okay. If she recognizes why it's a deal breaker for you, it sounds like it is, the comment about not wanting to be around kids that aren't yours is weird. Did none of her friends have children? The girlfriend seems either young or just emotionally immature based on this. OP, you're not the a-hole. Please keep nurturing Lucy. It sounds like you and her mothers are giving her a rich life full of love. Don't let someone dictate your relationships and good luck, OP. I guess I just don't really understand what there is to handle about this situation. It's somewhat unconventional in principle, yes, but I really don't see how it's any different in practice than him having a niece. It's not like he's paying child support or has custody. He's present in her life the way an uncle would be. While I personally agree with you, not everyone sees it that way. I'm just saying that accepting an idea is different than accepting a practice. I'm also not damning the girlfriend for feeling that way, but she does need to recognize that this situation isn't for her. That's okay, but she shouldn't try to change OP or his family dynamic. Posted by user snu32512, titled, Am I the a-hole for taking $15,000 out of my daughter's college fund to buy myself a new car? I have an eight-year-old daughter, and to make college more easily accessible for her, my ex-wife and I each put money into a shared fund for her. My ex-wife and I do not get along, but we make an effort for the sake of our daughter. At the end of last year, my car basically blew up, completely blew a gasket, broke down every time I drove it, and ended up being written off. 
My current wife and I decided to save for a new car and to wait for one I was sure that I wanted as I loved my old car. On my way home from work, I drive past a really high-end car dealership. Basically sells vintage top class cars. They're absolutely beautiful, but I've never went in because they're extremely expensive. A few days ago, I drove past it and thought, why not? I'll have a look and just not buy anything. I walked in and saw a truly beautiful Mustang, rang my wife and told her I'd found the car I wanted. We hadn't saved enough, so I used the money from our savings and without thinking, dipped into the college fund my ex-wife and I have for our daughter. It was just under $15,000. I rang my ex-wife after I'd bought it to tell her and assured her that I'd put the money back in. But she went ballistic, telling me that she'd basically just paid for my car as she puts more money in monthly than I do. I said that was ridiculous and that it doesn't matter because it's my money too. She's now going on about suing me and all sorts, which is just ridiculous. Am I the a-hole? Feel like it's a troll post, but I'll bite. Yes, you're the a-hole for doing that. You know you're the a-hole. You just wanted a shiny new Mustang. Look at you. You're so special. You're the a-hole. You stole from both your wife and your daughter to irresponsibly buy a car that you can't afford. I hope this is a troll. No one can be this dense. I'm seriously glad I live in a country where this would not be possible. He would be able to pay into the accounts for his child, but he would not be able to open, close, or withdraw without the other parent present. If you wanted to do anything alone, you'd have to bring court orders showing you have sole custody. He's a crap parent, and I have high doubts he'll pay that money back. I hope the mum does sue him. America has something called a 529 account that this would be difficult to do with. They're just not using it. So the account is probably just a normal joint account in the parents' names that they're calling a college fund. I think you're right, this is probably the case. In either case, OP is the a-hole, and I'm glad he's being sued over his BS. Posted by user Elena Brofton, titled, Am I the a-hole for telling my daughter-in-law she needs to let my son be in the delivery room instead of her mother? My daughter-in-law, Katie, is currently 37 weeks pregnant with my first grandchild, a baby girl. I really love Katie, her and my son have been together about six years now, and I have a good relationship with her but we've recently come to a head on this discussion. Due to COVID, the hospital Katie plans on delivering her baby in has a one birthing partner limit, and instead of choosing my son, she chose her mother. My son claims that they had a discussion about it and he was okay with it, but I think it's completely inconsiderate of Katie to deprive my son of this incredible experience. Sure, her mother is her support system, but so is my son. Katie is also an extremely insecure girl and has said she doesn't want my son seeing her in that much pain and discomfort, which, having three babies myself, I do understand, but I do not think it's good enough reason to not let my son see his baby being born. It's his baby just as much as hers. They come round to my house for dinner once a week, usually on a Wednesday, so last night. My son got up to go to the bathroom, so I decided to have a quick word with Katie. I wasn't pushy, I just suggested that she should have my son in the delivery room instead of her mother, as it was his right to be there. She said they'd agreed between themselves that it was okay, but I know my son and I just can't imagine him being okay with that. I asked her why she didn't want my son in the room, and she explained why, her insecurities, etc., and I told her she was being idiotic. For someone soon to be a mother, she sure is childish. She shouted for my son, and my son was furious at me, telling me that he was okay with whatever Katie wanted, and that he'd only be sitting outside. He'd get to see his daughter straight away. I said that wasn't good enough, and he said that if I kept this up, I wouldn't be seeing my granddaughter at all, which is just ludicrous. Am I the a-hole? Uh, yes, you're the a-hole for this one. I think it's obvious with their reaction that's coming here. You're very much the a-hole. How can you not think you're the a-hole if you're being attacked by your own kids that are okay with their decision they've made? OP, you are the a-hole, and you need to respect their boundaries. You're the a-hole. She's the one passing the human out of her body, she's the one that decides who's in the room with her. I think it would be fine for husband to be upset and hurt, but OP needs to stay in her lane. Exactly my thoughts. The son is okay with it and understands. OP needs to mind her own beeswax. You're the a-hole. 
Even if the son is not okay with it and is just going along with what the wife wants because it's easier, it still is not anyone else's place to interject. The only person who gets to oppose the wife's decision is her husband if he wants to be in the room. Personally, I think the wife needs serious therapy if she's too insecure to allow the person who she loves and helped her create the life to be there when that life comes into the world. But that's not the issue. Mother-in-law went too far in this case. Eh, if you can only have one person due to COVID rules, then as a practical matter, your mother who has actually given birth is a better choice in my opinion. If my wife was giving birth and they could only have one person, I'd want whoever was going to make it easier for her. If that was me, great. If it was her mum, great. You're the a-hole. Oh my god, you are so the a-hole. This is not your business. It is Katie's decision and your son is okay with it, so butt out, granny. And stop insulting your daughter-in-law. Some women, myself included, do not wish to be watched during labour. There is nothing wrong with that. Let's not forget to point out I hope OP likes not being a part of her grandchildren's lives. She straight just ticked off her son and daughter-in-law. Stop butting your nose where it doesn't belong, OP. You are a supporting player in this situation, so be supportive. You won't like what happens if you can't figure out how to do that. Huge, you're the a-hole. Am I the a-hole for asking my friend for a boob voyage party? A while ago, my doctor found a cancerous lump in my breast. Thankfully, it was stage one, but I did end up having a mastectomy. It was a stressful time, and when my friend was over a few days ago before my surgery, we got on the topic of the boob voyage party from Jane the Virgin. I asked her if she would throw me one of those parties to help me get my mind off it. I thought she would put together just a small girls' night, but she went all out. She invited all of my friends and my boyfriend, and had an array of boob paraphernalia. It was funny and light-hearted, and meant a lot to me to get all that support from my friends. During my recovery, my boyfriend confronted me and said that he hated the boob party. He thought it was tacky, and he was offended that I hadn't asked him to put something together instead. He said that we were supposed to be going through it together, and I should have thought about his feelings, and the fact that he doesn't like parties, and wouldn't want to spend one of the nights leading up to my surgery like that. I told him that I'm sorry that he felt that way, but it was really helpful for me, and I was the one getting surgery and treatment. I told him I wanted to support him, but my feelings had to take priority under those particular circumstances, and the party helped me. He's still angry at me for refusing to apologize for asking my friends to throw the party without asking about how he felt about it first. It comes up now and again, and he still wants me to apologize. Am I the a-hole? I'm gonna go with a big fat no, you're not the a-hole. It's absolutely your body, you do what you want, you're in party. How does his feelings at all factor into this? I don't get why he's so personally offended. He doesn't have to go if he doesn't want to, but that just shows that he's shallow, he's deep. He, I don't like parties, so I don't want you to throw one. I don't want to have to go to them. I don't want to have to be subject to this. Uh, you, should, you should think about me. No, you're a terrible boyfriend if you do that. Her life could be on the line here, given that breast cancer is such a serious issue. Jesus, let people have some fun, boyfriend. Surprised if she doesn't break up with this man over this. So, you went through a life-changing experience, and he made it all about himself? Not the a-hole. You probably would be very shocked how many men make their wife's or partner's diagnosis all about them. Hell, my father made my ovarian cancer diagnosis in my teens all about him. Yep, pretty unforgettable that in the US, when a man is suffering through a serious illness, his chance of his wife leaving him plummeted 5%. When a woman is suffering through a serious illness, her chances of her husband leaving her jump way up to 20-25%. to 25%. Yep. It's pretty unforgivable if you ask me. It shows the differences on how men and women are raised, as well as how society views them. Well, one is raised and socialized to be a caretaker and head of the emotional labor department, the other one pretty much the opposite. When they suddenly have to deal with emotional labor and be a caretaker, obviously they can't handle it and jump ship. Just another way of how sexism hurts everyone. I'm talking about just historically how men and women have been socialized. I'll make a disclaimer for the not all men crowd, and the women a horrible crowd too. It just makes sense that historically, this is the way people have been raised for a long time, and a lot of cultures are still like this. Yes, 
I, 24 female, nursed my last boyfriend through Ewing's sarcoma, and during that time, I realized that I didn't want to be in the relationship anymore. Note that I did not dump him while he had cancer. I realized that if the roles had been reversed, if I had been the one lying incapacitated after six months of chemotherapy and half my hip removed, the household would have gone to crap. Unlike me, he would not have regularly sterilized the entire house to protect my fragile immune system. He would not have washed my sheets. He would not have cooked without being asked. He would not have brought me breakfast in the hospital every day at 8 a.m. because I didn't care for hospital food. He would not have written down all my concerns and brought them up at the doctor's office because I was too tired to remember. He definitely would not have helped me change my surgical dressings, and he would not have known how to comfort me. It would have been my burden to comfort him and to hide my pain so that he didn't feel uncomfortable. I know this because that's exactly what happened for any minor injury that I received. My next partner is going to be just that, a partner. No more trying to convince the other person that they should respect me enough to take on their fair share of the emotional and physical labor. You either understand equality or you don't. Not the a-hole. When someone shows you who they are, believe them. Your boyfriend is a self-centered a-hole who can't even tolerate you getting support in the way you need it for your medical diagnosis and treatment. That he thinks his feelings about your cancer are more important than your feelings is very telling. And I hope you'll ditch his ass and find someone who has a working sense of compassion. Exactly right. I had cancer. We went through it together, but not like this. She respected the fact that I'm the actual one with cancer. Anything else is unacceptable. You needed and deserved your boob patty. <laughs> party. Have her plan another one and don't invite his ass. Posted by user, By the Twin Moons. Titled, Am I the a-hole for making customers that stiff me on the tip my last priority? Ooh. I, 21 female, am a server in a small town in Kansas, where the minimum wage for waitresses is $2.13 an hour, which is just enough to cover income taxes. Due to that, all of my income, and for most of the servers in the state, is comprised of tips. Recently, I got into an argument with an acquaintance, 25 male, of mine. He mentioned how he doesn't believe in tipping, and that it wasn't right of me to treat customers that never tip as less important than other customers. Generally, if I have a lot of tables, I will put off serving cheapskates until my other tables are caught up. I understand that the tipping system is broken, but I also believe that people that don't tip with the mindset of, I'm going to change this system, consciously or subconsciously, taking advantage of it. And I believe a portion of people refusing to tip is not going to change the system and force my employers to give me a living wage but instead, just screw me over because I live in a small town and don't have the option of finding a different job. Am I the a-hole here? I know my opinion is entirely biased, but what do you guys think? Edit. Everyone talking about how servers in cities make Boku money? Please keep in mind, the average server in my small town post tips will make about $7.50 on the lowest day to $10 on the highest day. And in the state of Kansas, if you don't make the full minimum wage, your employer is supposed to, though this doesn't always happen in locally owned businesses. Edit, me doing this only applies to regular customers. I had an entire argument that I laid out there, but then I realized, I'm Australian, I don't know what I'm talking about. I've never lived in Kansas and these small cities, I don't know the environment that these people live in. I don't know what it feels like to be shortchanged. I don't know what it feels like to have someone not tip me and I lose my wage because of that. I feel like it's kind of an everyone sucks here situation. You suck for not tipping and you suck for treating them worse because they didn't tip. But what's the solution to this? I don't know. Either OP is not the a-hole or everyone sucks here. I'm just very conflicted and confused. Not the a-hole. Screw literally every single person that doesn't believe in tipping. Edit, if he lives in somewhere that pays the waitstaff a living wage, then feel free to not tip. If you live in America and don't tip when you go out to eat, make your own food. Maybe we should just pay servers a livable wage instead of this weird awkward custom of tipping. Hmm. Edit, I'm not suggesting not tipping right now, just that I would rather they pay the servers well, then we can get rid of tipping. 
The amount of people jumping to conclusions in this thread is staggering. Who came up with this horrendous system? From the UK, and this whole concept is so infuriating, pay a decent minimum wage, then tips covers good or great service and food, which is how it is in Australia, and I completely agree with that. This is my experience here, and is anecdotal. Call this a disclaimer. An ex worked in a pizza restaurant in a very busy shopping centre. She was paid approximately £350 per week. Tips were huge, ranging from 50 to 100 per shift. So each week, after passing on to the kitchen, she'd see about 700 per week on a good week as her contracted pay was too low to pay tax on. So £26,000 per annum, up to £36,000 per annum take home if everything was at its best. This is an extreme example, as she was very good at what she did, and picked the restaurant she wanted to work at based on its potential. Essentially, she was being paid more than junior doctors, teachers, solicitors, with the same two years experience that she had. This is why the rest of the world finds your tipping culture weird, and you get mixed responses from those outside of the US. I tip 10% for okay service and food, 20 for great. Poor service, and it's why should I tip? Not the a-hole, your friend is just being cheap. This, and getting what he pays for. When I was young, I asked Dad why everyone at the restaurant is so nice to him, and it seemed like he got better service than I got elsewhere. He looked me in the eyes and said, always tip well. And now I do, especially at places I frequent. To get a bad or no tip with me, you basically have to be actively rude to me, which almost never happens. Not the a-hole OP. When you pay more for something, that something will be higher quality. Why shouldn't that apply to service? And any non-tippers reading this, your experiences at restaurants and bars will be way better if you start tipping well, and it's worth it. Posted by user Red Suitcase Triple Eight, titled "Am I the a-hole for telling my children's teachers to screw off and pulling her out?" This happened last year, and I was telling a friend about it yesterday. She said I overreacted and she would have handled it differently. My daughter was in the fifth grade at a regular public elementary school. Now, there is this other little girl in her grade that is just a known bully among the girls. My daughter is very sweet and quiet. She had never been in trouble before. Now, I think her kind nature has the tendency to make her a target for a bully. This girl had been picking on my daughter for years on and off, as well as lots of other girls. I tried so many times contacting her teachers, principal, her mum, school counsellors. Every time it just fell on deaf ears. I know I wasn't the only parent who tried and tried. There were multiple families who were fed up. Well, last year, it was about two weeks before school was out, and my daughter and her best friend were playing outside. This girl starts picking on my daughter and her friend. My daughter looks her in the face and says, You're a tramp. I'm sick of you teasing us. Please leave us alone. Well, this girl goes and tells the teacher. Now look, I would have preferred my child didn't use that type of language, and we did talk about how she could have been polite, but firm in her words. At the same time, if the school would have done something a long time ago, none of this would have happened. Well, my child's teacher began to scream at my child until she was in tears and then sent her to the office where she was screamed at for hours longer. So now she's being bullied by the staff as well. I was livid and went into the teacher's office and let her have it. I told her, if you people would have done something about the bullying, my child wouldn't have felt the need to bully this child back. How dare you make my child out to be a monster, and a bad child when she has been victimized since the first grade by this girl. The teacher said I should be deeply ashamed of my daughter, Hell no, I told her to piss off, and pulled her from the school, we will be attending a private school in the fall. Oh, round of applause to OP for that one. Absolutely not the a-hole. Why do you even have to ask the question? The, the question should be, am I the a-hole for not punching that uh, teacher in the face for defending the bully? Jesus. You gotta stop bullying at its source straight away, and they obviously were condoning it by not taking any action as teachers. That's disgraceful. I'd be reporting them to whatever entities would listen to me, but then again, that might fall on deaf ears. And the cycle repeats. It's why you take your kids to Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and they tackle the problem themselves, right? <laughs> right? That's sarcasm, don't at me.
not the a-hole. You're a good parent for getting her out of there and should be proud of your daughter for standing up for herself. My parents have a rule that if we do or say something like that to a jerk, then they won't get mad at us. After using a curse word, now it's the end of the world! But terrorizing someone isn't. Oh, of course. Total sense. Edits. My brother punched a total dick in the face who bullied everyone in the face. God, I'm gonna bully you right in your face, buddy. He shut up for the end of the year because my brother then went into middle school, sixth grade, and Doucheface went to fifth grade and I went to four grade. I don't know how that changes anything, but okay. Not the a-hole, but did they really scream at her and was it really for hours? Screaming at someone for 10 minutes sounds tiring. I can't imagine doing it for hours. That was the only thing that made me wonder if you're being an overdramatic parent here, but if everything else went down the way you say, then not the a-hole. My child said that her teacher yelled and screamed at her for about an hours, and then sent her to the office where it continued by the principal. What I think most likely happened is there was some yelling, followed by them trying to get my child to apologize, which she was refusing, then followed by more yelling. Her teacher was a very intense personality. Jesus. She'll be better off at another school. So I agree that more should have been done to stop the bullying earlier, which likely could have prevented this, but also, think seriously about what your child is saying and how likely it is to have really happened that way. Not calling your child a liar, simply seeing kids exaggerate. Consider this. Where were the other students in her class as the teacher was yelling for an hour? What was happening with all of the office staff's other responsibilities as they yelled at your child for hours on end? The likelihood of this happening in such an extreme way for so long is highly unlikely. A teacher can't simply abandon the rest of her class to yell at a student for an hour. As a previous school employee, I think your child probably got yelled at by the teacher, maybe for several minutes and too harshly. Then your child was sent to the office, where they were scolded and sat for several hours after refusing to apologize. Obviously, I wasn't there, but the logistics of spending several hours yelling at a single child just isn't possible. There are too many other moving parts in a school. You could be very, very right. Little kids do exaggerate, especially if it felt really harsh and never-ending. I could see her thinking it was longer, but like I said above, I know the school counselor was called in to watch the class for a bit. Posted by user Hate My House 22 titled, Am I the a-hole for showing my boyfriend how disturbing it is to have him yelling at video games all the time by calling my friends up and having a joking scream? My boyfriend plays games with some of his friends from college, and they get really intense about it, like yelling in frustration. It bothers me a lot. I grew up in a rough home, and I don't like that environment of screaming and cussing and anger in my home. I've told my boyfriend this, and he says he's not really mad, it's just a game. It's just the way he connects with his friends who are competitive people. But to be honest, it bothers me a lot. Last week, I had been napping, and I heard a holler, and I was immediately woken and feeling panicked. I, of course, quickly remember where I was, but I was upset. I really just don't want those energies in my home. I went downstairs and told my boyfriend to stop hollering at home because it's stressing me out, and he kind of brushed it off. Later that night, I called my friend as a jerk, said I should just have a yell with her, and she was all for it. She went out to the woods behind her house and also grabbed her roommate on the way. It was kind of silly at first, yelling over Skype, but we kind of got into it. My boyfriend was yelling about some crap her boss said, and her roommate and I were yelling back, Screw that girl! Yeah, you need a job! And stuff. It was kind of hard to keep from laughing, and we kept dissolving into giggles. It devolved into one of us shrieking like a maniac, everyone dying laughing, and then repeating. My boyfriend came upstairs at that point. He'd been sitting outside and smoking, and he asked what the hell was going on. I was like, I'm calling my friends. Thought we'd try having a scream. Seemed like a fun way to socialize. He was telling me off saying that hearing women screaming is going to make someone worried. And I was like, oh no, I'm sure it's fine. Screaming into a mic is just normal socializing, right? We talked later, and he didn't want me pulling that crap again because it freaked him the hell out to hear me screaming. And I was just like, okay, so do you finally get it? I feel freaked out when you bring that energy into the house too. And he said he didn't think it was the same. 
He and his friends normally socialize like that. Me and my friends were being crazy to make a point. I said that I had a lot of fun having a yell on the coal. It felt good, and if he wanted to keep bringing that energy into the house, I'd be doing it too. But if he didn't want that kind of energy around, we could stop it together. He called me ridiculous for this. And yeah, I know it's kind of petty, but I also think I have a point. If he doesn't like me screaming in the house, he should understand I don't like him screaming in the house. Am I the a-hole for having a yell while video calling my friends to try and make a point to my boyfriend that his yelling when gaming with his friends is disturbing? No, absolutely not. No, scream all you want. Screw him. He doesn't get to decide what goes and what doesn't go in this house just because he feels he wants it one way or another. You can't compromise like that. Absolutely, keep screaming in that house all you want. The neighbors call the cops, even better. The boyfriend gets to deal with that, I think. He needs to learn to stop screaming. I've been called out on my screaming in the house before. It's absolutely a behavior you can stop. He just doesn't want to stop it. And that's the problem here. He doesn't want to stop, but he wants her to stop. You can't have it both ways. Grow up and be mature, Opie's boyfriend. Opie, not the a-hole. Not the a-hole. He's being super hypocritical. You asked him to stop screaming for valid reasons, and he refuses to respect that. You have the right to feel safe in your own home, and if his yelling makes you panicked and uneasy, he needs to grow up and change his behavior. OP, your screaming bothers me. Well, it shouldn't. Later. Why are you screaming? OP's partner refused to back down. That's a huge red flag. Not stopping behavior that really hurts your partner is another huge red flag. What OP is experiencing is called flashbacks, and I've seen a lot of it at work. I have them too. If he doesn't stop, OP risks being re-traumatized. His behavior is childish and reeks of entitlement. OP needs to reconsider the whole relationship unless her boyfriend decides to grow up. And honestly, yeah, the fact that it could re-trigger someone's trauma is absolutely a deal-breaker in a relationship. Not the a-hole. Oh my god, dude, I'm in the exact same situation. I have autism and get triggered by loud noises, and especially shouting. My boyfriend will be playing his game with his friends and suddenly scream, and I legitimately start crying. I wish I had the guts or energy to do this so he would understand. Does he know you start crying? Also, that's really sad and I really feel bad for you, mate. Yes, he does. He eased up a little. Posted by user Eva Charisse, titled, Am I the a-hole for sleeping in my roommate's bed for a week after my boyfriend puked red wine all over mine? My roommate and I, both 20 female, don't know each other that well. We have mutual friends who both knew we needed roommates at the beginning of the year, so set us up. We're not in the same apartment at the same time very often, so I wouldn't say we're friends, but we don't dislike each other. At the beginning of last week, my roommate told me she was going back to her hometown, which was about two hours away, because her dad was sick and she wanted to be with her family. I said, okay, see you when you're back. You know, the usual. That night, I invited my boyfriend over and we ended up getting a bit drunk, which resulted in him puking red wine all over my bed. It was like 3am at this point and I was a bit tipsy, so I dragged him over to my roommate's bed and we both fell asleep. The next morning, my boyfriend went home, but I was hungover and didn't want to wash my sheets yet, so I just stayed in my roommate's bed. I ended up sleeping and staying in my roommate's bed for the rest of the week. She came back to the apartment on Monday whilst I was out shopping, and I came back to her questioning as to why there was a phone charger on her bed, and I told her that I'd been sleeping in her bed because of the red wine puke, expecting her to just find it amusing but she was absolutely disgusted and called me a slob because I didn't wash my sheets. She then demanded I change her sheets because my boyfriend and I had both slept in them, and I refused, saying they were both hers so she should clean them. She's now saying that I crossed a line and that she's going to start looking for a new roommate. Am I the a-hole? How can you leave red wine puke on a bed for a week? Did OP just not tell us that she cleaned it? Is it just sitting there festering for a week? How could anyone do that? Obviously, OP is the a-hole and deserves to learn this lesson the hard way. How could you not be the a-hole in this one? I don't understand. It's so stupid. You're the a-hole. 
changing her sheets would be the least you should do. I'd be demanding you vacuum my mattress as well. And it's pretty disgusting not washing the puked on sheets either. If you and your boyfriend can't handle alcohol or the aftermath, maybe don't drink. She left puke-covered sheets for a week. Like, there's general laziness, and then there's this. I would be looking for a new roommate too. This is so gross and invasive for the roommate's privacy. That's a crack house level of laziness. I assumed when I read the title that maybe this was a misguided cleaning standoff with the boyfriend. Like, he'd be refusing to clean up his mess and she was finally putting her foot down about cleaning up after him. That would still be horrific in a way, because goddamn, you don't let biohazards marinate in your bed for a week to prove a point. Imagine my shock when I realized she left puke in her bed for a week because she felt lazy. Crack house levels of laziness is right on the money. Not the a-hole, not your bed, you shouldn't have slept in it. One night wouldn't have been terrible, but a whole week in someone else's bed because you didn't want to wash your sheets is just plain rude. Sorry to say, but your roommate is right. You're a slob. I agree with one night not being terrible in theory, but she dragged her just puked all over her bed boyfriend with her, therefore risking him puking all over the roommate's bed too. And I think we all know that if he had, it would have been her roommate's responsibility to clean it because it was her bed. And apparently, leaving pukey bedding laying around for a week is a viable option in Dopey's world. G'day there guys, Outro Marky here, just wanted to say thank you so much for watching today's episode, I hope you really enjoyed it, hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed making it. Now with that said, we have some special mentions, everyone that signed up for my Patreon, everyone that's a channel member, you guys all know who you are, I'm going to start putting you on screen in the near future. Sorry, I'm very lazy, but I do love each and every one of you, and you all know that. If you want to join, there is links down in the description below. If you want to be a channel member, there's a join button next to subscribe. It helps me out immensely. Also, I have a second channel that does uh, memes. It's called Marky2. It should be on screen here now. If you like memes and you want to laugh with me, it's some not-so-politically-correct content all the time. Hope you enjoy it. Click on the screen, subscribe, and enjoy the memes. That's all I have for today, and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.